Kia ora and welcome to Thai One Any Percent. I'm Sir Lawrence NZ. I'm a five times Any Percent former world record holder, current number two, and major glitch hunter and browser for the game. I've taught around 20 people how to run this game slash category, with many of them making their way into the top 10. This is my long form tutorial and guide to speedrunning Thai the Tasmanian Tiger Any Percent. I'm not really going to be editing this too much, otherwise, this will take me an eternity to make. Anyways, the sections are going to be explaining all of the game and its objectives, general movement, game mechanics, recommended hardware settings, and what um, hardware you actually want to run the game, um, a slow walkthrough, basically going over all of the strategies and skips throughout the entire run, um, with varying degrees of difficulty, and then finally all of the alternative routes and how to do them. So yeah, that's just about it. With that out of the way, Let's explain Tie the Tasmanian Tiger. The goal of Tie is pretty simple. These things over here, these are called Thunder Eggs. You need to collect 17 of them in each of the game's three hubs to get each of the elemental boomerangs. I'll just use the cheat code to get those right now. So, with these boomerangs, First off, you get your second boomerang, but then you get the flame rang, then you get the frosty rang, and then you get the zappy rang. Now, in the standard way that you would beat the game, we call that 51 thunder eggs. Um, you still need to get the, still need to get the zappy rang, which requires 51 thunder eggs. And any percent, we're able to skip the third hub. So, for the first hub, we have two up, walk in the park, shipwrecks. Not necessarily in that order, and Bull's Pen is the boss. And then for Hub 2, we have Bridge on the River Tie, Snow Warriors, and Outback, and then Crikey's Cove. Once again, not in that order in the speedrun. Hub 3, Liar Liar, Beyond the Black Stump, Rex Marks the Spot, and Fluffy's Fjord as the boss. So those are the three hubs there. And these will eventually, after you beat the bosses for each hub, those will give you boomerangs, which then allow you to progress to different sections in the game, and will also be required for beating the final boss eventually, with the exception of the zappy rang, which we can skip. The zappy rang is skipped using the gate skip, um, which uses a technique called ground swimming, where we're going to be able to jump over that gate. But we'll get to that in the run itself. That's kind of just the general explanation of how to progress through the game and everything like that there. The general story behind the whole game is basically Ty is a Tasmanian tiger. He's having to run through the Australian countryside, etc., collecting all of these thunder eggs to um, allow his koala friend to create better boomerangs for him and such, letting him explore the outback and um, build up enough power to locate these things called talismans, which you get from beating the bosses. And once you get all of the talismans from the from the various hub levels and stuff, you need to go to kind of like the final boss gauntlet area and collect the final two. And that allows you to beat the game then. However, once again, we can skip one of them by not needing to do hub three. Kind of how the game runs in any percent. But yeah. So now that you know what the game is about, let's go over kind of just the general settings and everything that you want to get before you actually jump into speedrunning this game. Many of you may not have played the game casually. It's a good fun game to play casually, of course, but many of you might want to just jump directly into the speedrun. And for that, I'm going to say there is one key setting that you just need to get straight off the bat. You need to turn off VSync. Now, there's a few other funny things that go along with that. And annoyingly, there isn't a VSync option natively in the game. Now. What will happen is if you are running on a 60 hertz monitor, 60 hertz on the dot, you will get this massive vertical tearing. You can get rid of this by overclocking your monitor or by simply having a monitor that runs above 60 hertz. The game only has 60 frames per second available of frames, etc. So if you exceed that, you'll essentially eliminate any sort of vertical tearing. If the vertical tearing doesn't bother you, you feel free to turn off VSync and run with that. But please do know that Having VSync on will cost you about a second for every save game that you need to do, and it will also cost you about a second for every load. That'll come to a good like 30 or 40 seconds throughout the entire run. So very much something that you want to keep in mind. The other massive difference that VSync makes, and this is actually honestly potentially bigger, is it changes the input lag massively for this game. So when I'm moving around here, Ty literally feels like attached to my mouse. The movement feels incredibly crisp 
incredibly responsive and everything like that but the moment that you have vsync on everything is going to feel laggy and delayed so that's why it is so important to turn vsync off cannot stress that enough if you want to run with high and fancy graphics or anything like that as long as you're hitting somewhere close to 60 fps you'll be fine vsync is the big one that you need to get off by all means possible so anyways going to in-game settings now we're going to go to screen these are my in-game settings here basically we're going to go with everything low as possible except for draw distance because there's one strategy that requires it to be on mid for bridge on the river tie for any uh, sorry for 100 this does go to low but that's outside the scope of this video um, for controls i would recommend obviously that you play keyboard and mouse i like to play with 800 dpi um, and you can see what my general setting so you can see my mouse sensitivity here and then my other sensitivity okay that comes out to having kind of like about five or ten centimeters to have tie turn around a full 360 degrees okay so a good five five or ten centimeters something like that i'll just point the webcam down a little bit hopefully you can see that so around five centimeters five ten centimeters to turn all the way around there that's kind of what you're looking for in terms of sensitivity so going back to options we're going to go to configuration um, these are just my recommendations these are not necessarily shared by all top players but for me i like to put next rank to r instead of e and then i also like to have my previous rank say as q and then i have my walk as control that one is one that messes with some people some people prefer it to be shift but in many games i have shift as my sprint button so <laughs> i would accidentally just end up walking constantly if i had that as shift so that is why i have it like that tab i prefer to have this on my keyboard instead of on my mouse um potentially could put it to another key but i think like my fourth finger slash pinky getting to tab is probably the most convenient for me and i've kind of just stuck with it you only need to use your scope in a few very specific situations and in many cases actually you can do scopeless which well scopeless for quite a few things which will end up saving you like 0.1 of a second but generally you want to have it decently accessible lock on doesn't really matter at all camera distance doesn't matter action this is why i like to put this one as e instead of r simply because i can just spam e E while having my middle finger on W and just have that be a lot more convenient for me. Um, I think that one was on C. Doesn't matter though. Rank select wheel, make sure that you have this off. It is used for one random glitch, but it is not applicable in the speedrun. Um, in terms of camera settings, ties view direction, make sure that this is set to camera. This is going to make it so that wherever you point your camera, that's where the boomerang is going to throw. This is really big for being able to do various different things. Um, maintaining your movement while shooting things um, makes frills an absolute world easier than they would ever be on controller or anything like that where your shooting is locked to whatever direction you're facing um, all of these things i just keep them on normal 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 i like to increase my ties view speed so that for any like little flicks that i need to do in ties view i can do that faster um, camera speed that's kind of just matching with my over sensitivities and stuff as well to give me an overall sensitivity i like trackability on jump this is probably one of the most contentious um settings when it comes to top runners um there is a few funny properties for it essentially if you are running up a really steep slope i don't think we have anything that quite works in um in rainbow cliffs but if you're running up a really steep slope it will essentially pull your camera off to the side randomly that kind of thing um you can arrest it by moving your camera and controlling it yourself um comma crimson the current world record holder runs with the setting nothing wrong with it it just makes that kind of one little section a little bit weirder um you'll see how when i jump my camera completely follows along with ty's motion i believe this is how it was in the original game as well however it is no longer the default so this is what um, the other setting looks like. You can see that tie moves quite a bit more than the camera does. So you may prefer that, you may not, but also keep in mind there's also the weirdness of going up steep areas. In some ways as well, it also makes it so that you're able to maintain your height a little bit better when you're trying to jump and shoot things, like on the buttons for two up, for example. And then auto center camera. I like to have that on 
personally, if I'm ever needing to do anything on controller, this setting mainly affects controller. Um, it does make doing cast skip, the under underwater out of bounds version, it makes that significantly more difficult though. All right, so that's all of my in-game settings. Um, there's going to be a few extra settings to do with my graphics card, etc., cetera, um, which I'll just run through in a moment to be able to get all of the monitor overclocking and the V-Sync disabled and such. And then I'll also talk about any hardware and um, controllers and anything that you might want to use. So let's jump into that. Okay. So the next part of your settings is going over all of your NVIDIA control panel or your AMD um, graphics card settings. Um, I'm not sure what the exact settings are for Intel, so you will need to look up how to disable vSync and overclock monitor refresh rates with Intel cards moving forward, whether that's for integrated or hard, um, dedicated GPUs. So anyways, you go to your First off, we'll make the custom resolution and I'll get rid of my current one. Oh no, I'll just make a new one. <laughs> so you go to change resolution on NVIDIA control panel. If you don't see this here, um, you're probably on an old version. Just update your NVIDIA control panel, all of your NVIDIA drivers, etc. That should make this visible for you. There's a chance that your monitor, well, sorry, that your graphics card and potentially your monitor or your monitor cable does not support overclocking. So do be aware of that. You may want to try different um, HDMI um, or DisplayPort cables. Um, DVI, um, VGA or whatever, I don't think they tend to support it. So anyways, you want to go create custom resolution. You want to set it to 1920 by 1080 and then at least aim for 65 Hertz. Anything above that doesn't really provide you any benefit. Um, 65 is kind of the golden point where I've noticed that you don't really see any vertical tearing when you're playing or anything like that. And yeah, that'll make it a significantly more pleasant experience when we do turn off VSync. Um, next up is going into the actual settings for the game itself. We're not going to worry too much about global settings. We're going to go to program settings and then we are going to go to the start of the list first. <laughs> There we go. I just got my capture edge and stuff there. All right. So I'll just select Tide the Tasmanian Tiger from this drop down. There we go. All right. And from here, from a moment, I thought I did tie two. <laughs> From here, basically, I'm just going to set it to use all CUDA cores, low latency, ultra, max frame rate. Sometimes I like to cap this at like 300-ish, but it doesn't really matter too much. Make sure that you set this to your hardware GPU. If you're on a laptop, make sure that you're not going on to um, OpenGL or anything like that weird. Um, prefer maximum performance when it comes to power management. Um, high quality texture, set this to high performance instead. The other things you can kind of ignore, vertical sync, set this one to off. But these are all of my settings here. All right, now to do the same on AMD, um, I'd just like to say thank you Stealth Ninja for these screenshots. I know that you sent these to me ages ago, but whatever. Essentially, you go to your gaming tab, you find Tide the Tasmanian Tiger, and then you go to, I believe it is wait for vertical refresh um, and then potentially free sync or something like that enhance sync regardless set that to always off and then when it comes to when it comes to setting the monitor um, refresh rate or anything like that what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to um, go to the description I have a tutorial that will go over any details for for that there for you um, regarding any hardware or anything like that, let me turn off the NVIDIA control panel as well, and then go back to Thai. So, regarding hardware, we run with keyboard and mouse and a controller here. Now, if you don't run with a controller, um, you will lose about a minute and 15 seconds. 
That is the advantage that comes with running with keyboard, mouse, and controller. You do not use these the whole time. You only use controller for two sections of the run. Those two sections are Spire Swim and Outback Movement. Outback Movement is something that you won't need to worry about for the first few weeks of playing the game, really, because you'll have so much else to focus on. But essentially, the way the Outback Movement works is you, um, by default, you use your analog stick and then you would do up and then a side input on your keyboard. So I'm doing A on my keyboard and pressing up on my analog stick. Um, many of us, including myself, we rebind the stick movement to the D-pad using Steam Big Picture, and then we press the side movement, and you can see that that also gives me the massive speed. The reason why we have to do this on controller is because it was patched out of the game. Um, you were previously able to do it with just A and W, However, there was an oversight and they didn't patch it for using dual inputs. Um, in all, doing outback movement saves you about one minute. And then the other skip is Spire Swim, which basically your camera gets locked into a position and you're only able to control high in three dimensions if you're using the controller. So that is all of the stuff to do with what, um, what equipment you need to be running with. Now, in terms of computer requirements, um, basically you can follow the minimum specifications on the Steam page if you want to run 51TE at no massive disadvantage. 51TE is ran on an older patch of the game, so I will just bring up the SRC and show you where to get that if you are interested and if you are on a slower computer, but generally any percent is considered to be more fun because Hub Free has more RNG and such. So we go to any percent here and then we go to resources and then in resources you should have the old version this is used for 51 te no ground swim cheap percent it's also used currently for 100 percent because we haven't routed in ground swimming for 100 percent yet you can also get the practice mod here which will give you various teleporters and everything like that to practice all of your skips which i'll probably yeah i should probably show you how to set that up as well um but yeah, that, that's all the version stuff on the game. Um, yeah, I'll just split this and then show you how to set up practice mod. All right. Now, when it comes to setting up the practice mod, you want to go to the resources page and then you want to go to practice mod. And then you want to click on the download link and then you open up the download link. Also, very important. There is cheat codes here. If you want to warp to different levels or anything like that, we have a level warp cheat code here. You don't even need practice mod to use these cheat codes, okay? This is just a convenient place for you to use them. There is general text instructions here, but just so you know, also all oh, the section definitely still not work in progress, cap. Um, anyways, in here, you'll be able to see this is where the practice mod file is kept, and then we'll keep any relevant old versions in here as well. So you want to then go and download that, um, in my case, I just downloaded it before though, so here is the folder here. I think it might be trying to download itself again. No, never mind, there we go. So I've got it downloaded there. What I'm going to do is I'm then going to go to Steam, and then I'm going to go to my game library. I'll close down Ty for now. And then I will go to Properties, and then I will go to Local Files, and then I will go to Browse. This takes me to my Thai game files. From here, what I want to do is I want to copy my game files, okay? Because we're going to make basically a duplicate installation, changing one file. This is just going to be the easiest way for you to change versions quickly. And we're going to use like Steam version management for that. Well, Steam, same, Steam game management, basically. So now we've got copy here and we can call this, in my case, I'm going to call it tutorial practice mod for example. So then I'll come in here and now I can take that folder that I had just before and then I can put it in here and now what I'm going to do is I am going to get the name of data underscore PC. I'm going to delete that and then I'm going to replace the name of that practice v2 1.44 thing. I'm just going to call it data underscore PC. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to add a game, add a non CM game, browse, and then from your C drive to get to this folder, you want to go to program files, x86, and then you want to go to stem, and then you want to go to stem apps, I believe it is, and then common, and then find the folder that you just made. So tutorial practice mod for me here. And then I will select my Thai EXE. And now add selected programs. This should show up at the top somewhere or does it show up at the bottom? Okay, this is where it is. So it just showed up at the bottom there. So now you can see as well, tutorial practice mod. So Thai practice mod for tutorial. This is where it's going to be. So then I simply run this and any NVIDIA settings or anything like that that you did, you will need to duplicate those. Same with AMD settings for like all of your vertical sync and such, but trust me, it is worth it. Um, I won't bother doing it for this little bit here. Here's my display capture, capturing the game there. Yes, it's not. Okay, let me go with this. There we go. So. I'll just show you what it looks like here roughly just so that you can get an idea of the types of things that practice mod lets you do also you can see how slowly my game is doing all of those saves and everything like that and doing all of the all of the loading screens when i have vsync on i also feel a massive amount of delay so for example i'm going to ship wrecks and then what I can do is I can come here and then it will teleport me through various parts of the level, collecting the seahorses so that I can then go and practice Spire Swim. Not the best tide for it, but whatever. You can also see my game lagging beautifully when I haven't done proper settings. And also because I'm using higher encoding settings than I would usually use. But this is a Spire Swim here and then you just come up. Now, the cool thing about a lot of the practice mod stuff is we've also accounted for mistakes. If you fall down, you fall back down there, and then you can easily reset within a few seconds instead of having to swim all the way back around here. Another big case of that, especially for new runners, is going to be mill skip. If you fail this one, this one takes like a minute or two to get back into position usually. So if you fall down there, this is what we call the fall of shame. Not a big deal for when you're practicing. Instead, you can just do this sort of thing. I'm playing with VSync on the. Oh, sorry. Playing with VSync on though, so delay and everything really messes messes you up. But that's kind of what Melskip is looking like there, and that is what the practice mod does. Now, let's just go over your Steam big picture settings real quick for the controller. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my desktop sounds because this likes to be bloody loud. So I'm going to open big picture mode in Steam and then I'm going to go to settings. Um, there's a chance that you may need to go to your controller settings and then enable support for it, etc. Um, yeah, I think you need to do that on both Xbox and PlayStation. And then you go to library, and then you go to, sorry, not library, is it? I think it's library. Yeah, okay, sorry, you click on the game. And then manage game, controller, configuration, I believe. Yeah, okay, and then you set this one to joystick move, and that's pretty much it. Um, I wouldn't bother changing anything else, really. Make sure that you keep this on joystick move as well, just because you're going to want that for your Spire Swim, because swimming off of the D-pad is quite annoying. Um, with all of that, I think that is everything that you will need for all of your settings and everything to run the game. So I will see you in the next section. All right. So now let's go all over all of Ty's general movement and mechanics, etc. So Ty only has a few abilities. He has jump, throw, and bite. Congratulations. That's all of Ty's abilities. So what can we do with that? Well, first off, we've got bite boosting. As you come off of the ledge of something, you can basically do a bite and then it will cancel the ending part of the animation that has him stuck on the ground. Doing this bite will give you a little burst of speed. Um, generally this only saves like 50 to 100 milliseconds or something like that. So not too big of a deal. You can even skip this 
until you're in like the 32 minute range and not even lose that much time it's actually kind of wild um a little bit more impactful in some cases and less prone to cause mistakes is doing what we call a fast fall so as you come right up to the edge of something you can fall and oh, you can kind of come off the front of a cliff or whatever from just far enough back that the game is like okay we're not going to send you out of the animation but we'll bring you down to the ground real quickly so you can see that you can fall down very quickly now the next one is diving now what I just did there is called ground swimming okay but I'll get to that in a moment so you've got like jumping and you can also add a bite with it you bite into the ground if there's enemies nearby or whatever or bilby crates or anything you can latch onto those but you can also dive into water and in some cases you can also dive against a wall and the game will get confused and will maintain you in your swimming state this is a glitch called ground swimming this is kind of our largest movement piece of tech um, movement tech or anything like that and it has a lot of depth and nuance to it but I'll just go over all of the jumping and stuff like that a little bit more first so you've got jumping you've also got gliding by holding your jump a second time or if you've fallen off of something holding it on the way down that's another way that you can also do your glide so you can also take that from a ledge bite as well or a bite boost sorry um so that's your gliding there is a weird thing with your gliding where right at the very top of your glide if you do it just before you start to go down you can get this thing called an extended glide where you get an extra boost of 20 units of speed upwards i believe if you glide at a really good timing or close to it that little burst of speed gives you a little bit more distance to be able to cover larger distances with all of your jumps and such or just get more height now there's one more part to gliding as well and that is called flutter flutter gliding um i also like to think a little bit of um rhythm gliding as well um you'll notice quite often especially for top runners that we have a specific rhythm that we spam out our jumps with this is to maximize our distance here so we get a perfect extended glide to start with and then we're spamming our glide after that um the rate at which we spam and the reason why it like varies a little bit is one to match like how fast we still have like up and down momentum slightly and then the other thing is the reason why we're spamming it is because when you're gliding you only move at around 25 percent of your normal speed so you lose a lot of speed when you do that um and you lose that speed almost instantaneously the moment you start gliding and you see that one tie lands he then accelerates back up really quickly as well so what we do is we are spamming out our glide so that Ty is able to kind of re-accelerate again in the air because you can see how Ty has no concept of inertia really as I'm jumping and then moving. So by flutter gliding you're essentially constantly resetting your vertical momentum that happens almost instantly. You can see how I can almost jump off of this thing here and my vertical momentum resets itself like almost instantly on those little taps um whereas your horizontal momentum you'll also be able to pick that right back up as well so by spamming out your glides long and short of it is basically you can get an extra three percent distance coverage overall you get a bit three percent better gradient essentially so by by flutter gliding i was able to get in between these two lily pads here and then i'll show you what it looks like without flutter gliding I'll get the first extended glide though, of course. There we go. So it's not a massive difference, but it is a difference nonetheless. So I landed here instead of around here. So a bit of a difference, um, not too big a deal, but it does make a few skips quite a bit easier. Um, that is everything that you will need to know on gliding, basically. Um, as long as you have V-Sync off, that will make timing your glides and everything a lot easier for those of you that are on console i'm not exactly sure how v-sync and everything plays into console but you may just need to get used to it it's a little bit rough but that is how it is also just for context as well for console runners if you are running solely on controller um there is one weird thing with your swimming your swimming radius see how i'm able to turn really tight here if i am on a controller see how i can turn way less sharply okay so that is controller swimming radius um 
across the entire run you will lose about 15 to 20 seconds on controller swimming radius alone um we're not sure of how to do outback movement necessarily on every single console we're not sure if it's supported on every console we do know that it works on switch um there is also some weird things to do with draw distance as well on switch i believe i could be wrong on that but you may need to be careful of what um draw distance you're on i believe xbox and playstation are fine though for bridge over the river tie you may need to double check whether those strategies work yourself if you're on the switch version um feel free to let me know in the comments but anyways that is everything you need to know on your swimming and your different versions regarding that stuff there as well um going on to your diving your ground swims there is a few rules here that are important essentially you need to jump and then do your right click which is my bite um you need to jump and do your right click quite quickly generally um if you ever hit the top of your jump you have done it you have done it too late um if you jump and press your right click almost immediately okay so you can hear the two keys that i'm pressing there if i jump and do that immediately and then nothing happens that means that you're in a legitimate place for a ground swim the game recognizes that there is water deep enough underneath you to do a dive however you just did your right click too soon if you jump and then you go for your right click super late that means that either your right click was too late or you're over a section of ground that is not viable for a ground swim this section i do know is viable so i just did it too late there so you need it to be in between your bite and in between no bite happening nothing happening also make sure that you're not jumping and then just spamming your right click that can quite often lead into just fail bites or whatever this one is very lenient but in many other locations that'll have you do this which loses considerably more time than doing a jump and then going again so only do a single um bite attempt whenever you try to do your ground swims so you can see there nice and lenient i go in between those two extremes to make things a little bit more complicated i will just show you gate skip here but i will explain it in more depth later but essentially on this one here i just take a fairly specific line and then i jump and do all of my inputs at the same time that time i did my right click too soon therefore nothing happened that time i got the timing right that's what we call a ground scam which can also happen to do with your direction that you came into it here i'll do it too late intentionally now oh. <laughs> i guess i just barely got in there so that time i was either too far to the left or too late once again i'll try and leave it too late um there's a massive like invisible wall here um gate skip is a bit of a weird one this is pretty much the only ground swim that we do that was an alignment fail um gate skip is one of the only ground swims that we do that you actually don't want to be in contact with the wall when you make your dive gate skip you want to get your right click before you make contact with the invisible wall just next to it um i'll just walk into it a little bit so you want to do your right click before you bonk into this but i'll go over that more later um regarding the general mechanics of how you can swim around and everything you can see anything over this kind of like shallow water here i'm able to swim i can i can even get quite far above the ground and then once i get too far above then it goes like oh you're too far away from the water but you can also swim over towards deeper water and then you see the deep water also takes you out of it um the way that you can maintain your swim even higher though is by going onto ground that is supporting you if the ground is not supporting you and is not sloped in a way that you can swim up it or down it then you will lose your ground swim so here these are all gradual slopes that i'm able to swim up when i say gradual they can be 89 degrees anything that is 90 degrees or steeper that is an overhang you're not able to swim up so for example this section just in here okay this one is a little bit deceiving because i believe there is ooh, gotta love the camera i believe there is some invisible walls around here so i may lose it nope okay i'll do it on this side so this little bit looks like it's going up nicely but there's an invisible wall here so it's actually just a vertical wall so i'm not able to swim up it but over those areas those are all gradual slope slopes upwards so once again i'll jump and get my ground swim this is another little mechanic here you can go into your scope to realign you okay that's what we call scope turning so i'll come up here 
and then you can see that I can swim up this wall and then swim around. Okay, and then there's one other little funny part on this. I'll go over this one, the skip more later, but this is what we call Mission Impossible. Essentially, when you lose your ground swim, you will be in the state of like what we call treading in the water. When you're in that state, you can actually cancel it by doing a jump to come out of it. So you can see I'm treading in the water there, swimming along the imaginary surface of the water, and then I'm able to jump and cancel out of it. And then this is what brings us into hub two, the fastest. So I'll just come back a little bit. Um, I'll also do a gate, uh, probably won't do a gate skip right now. Also, if you do want to practice the second part of gate skip, this is why we have um, practice mode here. One of the reasons is we have this pontoon. You can get a nice easy swim on this instead of having to get that more complicated ground swim just in that corner. And you can practice swimming up the tree here. Um, please do keep in mind that gate skip is not the easiest trick. There is no RNG to it really. The closest thing to RNG is the ground scams, which can happen, but legitimately you can get gate skip like 80, 90% of the time if you're if you're paying attention to all of your like alignments and everything like that perfectly on the start of your ground swim. You should never fail the tree itself if you take your time with it. 90% um, plus of failures for new runners end up coming from them just rushing the tree. Um, at least from when they have their ground swim. So we swim up here and then you can see that I get into a trading water state and then I can jump out of that and then go into my into my gate skip there. Um, the trading water state comes from basically just being in the water like this. You can jump from that and then same as well with what happens in that mission possible. You can also jump out of it like that. Um, don't think I need to mention underwater throwing or anything like that. We've gone over all of our bicing and all of that. Um, I think that's pretty much everything in terms of your general mechanics. We'll go over outback movement when we get to outback move. Uh, when we get to outback, so that should be everything that you need to know regarding kind of like general movement and mechanics and stuff like that in the game. So we'll jump into the first level, and that is going to be two up. I'm not going to be doing single rang route because that one is too complicated for <laughs> too complicated to start with. All right. I'll see you there. All right. So instead of starting inside a two up itself, we're actually going to start in Rainbow Cliffs. Reason for that is because two up is going to be the first level that I recommend that you start with. Now, you'll see that I have the game currently set to hardcore mode. When you are playing on keyboard and mouse and you are menuing on keyboard and mouse, hardcore, well, just keyboard, um, hardcore mode basically changes the default cursor location for where well, the default menu location for where you start menuing from, which makes it so that it requires less inputs. So top runners will typically run on hardcore. However, if you're not comfortable with it, feel free to mouse menu on non-hardcore. And then eventually when you are not dying at all or anything like that, feel free to then swap over to hardcore and then start learning to keyboard menu as well then. Um, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll, going, I'll be going between hardcore and normal mode. But anyways, first level, hardcore, we're going to jump in. First off, skip the cutscene, and then this one you're going to have, I believe it's a single cutscene, but I just spam it. Um, I like to zoom in my camera. Basically, we're going to be running, and at this point, I am already aiming towards, and hopefully I can get this to come up as well. Okay, I don't actually have that set up right now. But I am essentially aiming towards this little thing here, just a little bit to the right of it. And then I do a bite right as I go between these two bushes. Okay, that's going to give me the cutscene. And then I immediately would turn left and go to two up. This is where the advanced route and the beginner route already diverge here. On the advanced route, we would go into um, single rang. For single rang, you would run at an angle there. And then you would do a fence skip. I went at a little bit of a strange angle here. Essentially, you want to get over that thing here. I'll explain it more later. But... That is the order that we would do runs in the top level. For context, that route, if you do double biting, which is a little bit easier, not too much easier, um, you save three seconds over the standard route, and then you also get to do spire swim earlier, which is better for your reset efficiency. But if you're not doing spire swim, there's virtually no point in doing it. Um, which is why I would only really recommend this route for when you're trying to go for sub 30 minute times. Um, five seconds if you can get one of them biteless, seven seconds if you can get both biteless. However, 
bite list on the first side is like 1% success rate or less, which hurts our reset efficiency too much, so we don't do it. For some reason, the far side is easier. Anyways, let's jump into two up. That's enough preamble talking about single rank. This is going to be the route that I recommend that you start with, and you can pretty much take this all the way until you're low 30 minutes. Once you're going for the 30 minutes, though, feel free to pick up Spire Swim, feel free to pick up one rank. So, when you come into the level for the first time, you're going to be holding A, and you're going to press E, or your cutscene button, three times. That is going to skip all of the cutscenes, and then the A, and jump, is going to take you onto here. You want to do this without a ledge grab. What this is going to look like is this. Also, fastest way to re-enter levels is by main menuing. So there, I jumped up on top. Now, I came up there, and then see how I got right near the edge here. Um, don't let yourself go over the edge, because then you'll drop down and you may not get the distance that you need. But just before the edge, then you'll be able to jump it, and you'll be able to make it just fine. So that is the first fun drag there. Now, one thing that I also forgot to mention on the general movement is you also have a walking mode. For me, it is control. By default, it is shift. We use this in one or two setups, um, especially on the non single rang route. Anyways, so that is our first front drag. We're going to take a ledge bite down here, and then kind of in between these two pieces of grass here, we're going to do a little bite. Sorry, next one. Where did I already get it? Damn, okay, it was this piece of grass. I haven't played in like a month. Um, so that is one of the cutscenes there. And basically you're gonna be biting off of every ledge and every single cutscene that you can. You will build the mu muscle memory for these over time. So ledge biting all the way. Ledge bite into the cutscene, ledge bite, well, bite into the bilby. Okay, and then another cutscene just here. Was a little bit early. This is the first one that is going to really present you a choice. If you are under 35 minutes, you should probably be trying to skip some spy eggs. If not, just bite all of them. Biting all of them only loses you one or two seconds. Okay? Do not bother over resetting for these if you're not really trying to go for like the top few times. It's not too big a deal. Um, but regardless, this saves about one or two seconds. You can run kind of... I like to come in at this kind of angle here. This is where I'm coming in usually. This is where I get the cuts in. And then I am aiming in between these two um, spy eggs slightly to the right. And then I'm going to position myself on the closer end. Um and just underneath the spy egg. And then I'm going to jump, and then making sure that that spy egg is the one that I'm closest to, while also having it so that it would pull me up into the left, or whatever, as I am doing it. That will then give me the direction to chain onto the next one. Now, I actually didn't quite do it right there, so let's try and position myself. There we go. That time I did an extra click, that's why it brought me back down. Spy eggs are really annoying um, for some runners. Generally, if a top runner is paying attention, though, we'll be able to get it 99% of the time or more. So we jump under here. I am nice and rusty. Tinsel is probably loving this right now. All right. And run back at it. Underneath it. There we go. That's typically what we'll do. And then basically the moment that you've taken one step. Okay. Don't do it on the frame that you get the fund rate. You want it to be the frame after. Okay. You want to go for your jump, and then you want to land as far back on here as you can without ledge grabbing, because then that will allow you to take a better line up these platforms. Kill the frill, jump, bite over that, bite over that. You can get a slab bite here, but generally not, not too worth it, and especially with high levels um, doing single rang, it's not really worth it to go for a slab bite there anymore. And then here, you want to jump basically just as the opal comes into attraction range and then you want to bite over that bit of grass and then jump jump you want to delay your second jump a little bit otherwise then you can hit the julius cuts in there also another thing that i didn't mention in the mechanic section but any time that you're going up slopes of any kind jumping is going to be more optimal as long as you're not affecting your lines if you're walking if you're jumping up a slope that is like 45 degrees you'll actually get like an extra 10 to 20 percent speed something like that um this is mainly applicable on snow worries and shipwrecks if you're not doing spires from um you'll be able to save a few seconds across the run and a few milliseconds across different tas and such um funny how ties here goes side to side there but yeah 
Um, if your lines are affected at all, you know, like if jumping up or whatever makes it so that I have to take this wider, that's not worth it then. Okay, so you always want to prioritize lines, boosts, so like bike boosts and such, and then jumping. That is your um, tiers of priority for those styles of movement. Now, next skip here is two up skip. Um, I will show you the standard route first, but I will just get this bilby here. Uh, sorry, the non two up skip route. So you're going to come around here and then you're going to jump up past these dudes. You want to kind of like land on this middle section here where you can get another jump. Then you'll come around, bite, and then come down here, bite, bite. You want to kind of cut the corners on these fences and then kind of just into that little grass section. That is where you will get your boomerang. Um, now, for two up skip, um, it's a bit of a funny one. This is one that you need to use your walking mode on. And then there's two kind of commonly accepted styles for it. Coral style is the fastest. Um, it doesn't involve using the walking mode at all. However, it's probably about half the consistency. However, you can get both of both methods into the 90%. So it's a trade-off. Um, half a second to a quarter of a second faster. Anyways, I'm just going to cut here. And then I will be able to draw some annotations on this. All right, that took a little while to get sorted, but now I can draw. So you want to come up to this post here um, after you get the bilby. So you go boom, and then you come up here, and then you come up to this post. And then for me, it's control. Um, by default, it is shift. And then what I'm looking for is this little section on the post here. So I'm going to draw this in here. This little section of the post here, that like pointy part on it. I'm looking to line this up with this. Specifically looking for this point just in here. Once I line that up, I'm essentially going to then jump. And then at the top of my jump, okay, when Ty is like just about to start heading down or whatever. Um, so, you know, he goes up and then he's about to come down or whatever. I basically want to do my bite right here. On that section of the jump basically the frame after he starts going downwards that is when i want to bite um and then once i have done my bite i'm then going to be in the air and i'm going to rotate my camera around towards the left so that i am facing in towards kind of this direction here this is essentially the direction that i want to be facing and that's going to help push me undo the thing now once i get in if i'm not fully through it I'm going to turn a little bit further to the left to increase my pressure down and through the skip. And then once I have a little bit of momentum, I'm then going to rotate back out to the right. That rotation is going to help keep you with a bit of depth and everything like that and help you to kind of get through the skip. Now, another big thing is that while you're doing this whole thing, it actually helps to hold the walking hotkey, surprisingly, for the entire skip. So let's close out of the drawing for now. And then show you one here so jump and then just after the top of your jump see how like i've kind of wedged myself slightly under this bit of rock here i'm then going to turn to the left that's letting me slip through slightly and then you see here i would just be able to jump my way through in this case because i went hard left instead of increasing my pressure to the right to get for me for the skip i'm a little bit like in a funny spot where i'm in like the upside down v here um i can add my walking hotkey and then spam my jump and stuff like that, and I can actually get back through. A um, little bit harder to go back the other way, but I can manage it. So once again, this is what it looks like. That may have been a smidge early, not really. So there, I turned left, and then I turned right to use that pressure and that momentum to carry me through the skip. Just after the top of my jump, left, and then right. It's a little funny on the skip there. Um, but using my walking hotkey, you can virtually do the entire thing backwards almost. Not entirely, but yeah, makes it a lot easier to practice. However, in the practice mod, we do have a handy little thing. Okay, so this one, this was a bad timing, but I can save that even with my walking hotkey. Um, so in the practice mod, we have a teleporter at the start of the level that will take you um, over here. 
Um, we also have a teleporter here, which will set you up with a perfect alignment. It'll set you up with the angle here. It won't set up your camera vertically or whatever. It will set up kind of like this. Um, I prefer to kind of put it right on the point there, but it's fine. We can't change that vertical camera line. The horizontal is the only one that matters though. So anyways, I'll get through this skip here and we'll continue on with the level. Um, if you are joining back in from the stand, like from the non two up skip route, you would simply get the boomerang there and then jump on that platform and then glide over to this waterfall and then carry on this way and meet up with the path here. All right. So now for this, basically right on this little corner, just here, um, I'll draw that in right on this corner, just here, you're basically going to jump and then aim over towards the bus in there. And pretty much like just as you're coming a little bit past the top of your jump, that is where you're going to throw from. And then you want to be aiming a little bit to the side, a little bit to the side of where the button is so that your boomerang drifts off to the right because your boomerangs cycle that way. All right. So I'm going to throw jump and you see how the boomerang curves off to the right. And then here, when I jumped, I'm holding my scope and holding W. If you're not holding your W and you're just holding your scope, sometimes it will not respond that nicely. So just hold W with it as well as your scope and then you'll be good. Then I'd like to turn this way and basically just do a scope turn and jump. And then you'll make your way up the platforms. You do need to wait for just a moment, especially if you're doing single rain. For here, I like to aim towards that closer point. So I walk off of that, jump and get the bill be just there. Um, we're not sure whether we're doing a bite boost, uh, sorry, whether we're coming off of it, jumping and then doing a bite on top of the Bilby crate is faster or not. We're not entirely sure. Anyways, you continue along here and then you have another little divergence between the two routes. Um, if you already got the second boomerang, then basically you'll just jump straight in there and then you'll start killing the frills. However, if you have done two up skip, you'll come in over here. You don't want to fail your bite like that. You'll get the second boomerang. I like to get it just on this bit here. You can see when the exclamation mark comes up so I can get it just here. And then I turn off to the right, jumping immediately off of a buffered jump. So this is what this should more ideally look like. Oh, of course you won't have a second boomerang. I just went into my spamming by habit. So it'll look like that. And then you'll get your second boomerang and then buffer two jumps and then right rang kills that for all. left rang. And then you're cycling through here and you're just running and shooting back the whole way. On the other one, you'll basically aim to get the frill at that. Like you'll get these like closer frills here. So you'll be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's kind of the way that you'll want to manage those frills for the like lasso section there. Anyways, now we're coming in towards the end of the level here. You want to glide over that. And then kind of like just before he lands, you have another cuts in, bite into that, and then you immediately go into a main menu. Okay. You need, especially if you have V-Sync off, you really need to prep while you're in the air coming towards that thunder egg to get into your menu here because your save will go really quickly. If you're on console, it might take a second or two. Um, but anyways, you then want to go and do your menu. So that for me is going to be escape, up, enter, left, enter. And then you're just spamming enter the rest of the way. And then that will take you back in for your main menu. Remember main menu is the fastest way to get back into the level. It is faster than doing exit level and then coming back in. So at speed, this looks like this. All right, now that brings us into the time attack. So from here, I like to basically hold A. Sorry, what do I like to hold again? I think I like, no, it's holding S, yeah. And then I go like that. And then notice how I was landing on the kind of like middle section of this little thing here. That's then letting me get my jump again nice and quickly. Doing my bite boost. You can basically have it so that Ty's hand just barely gets inside of the thing. And that's pretty much all that there is for the TA. After this time attack, we're going to exit level and then we'll be jumping into shipwrecks because we want to have the swimming ability before we go to walk in the park. So that is the time attack there. Nice and easy.
exit level, you have to do two ups instead of one up that time. And now really important thing, whenever you're on these loading screens and such, okay, this is off the round now, obviously, but whenever you're on these loading screens, make sure that you're not just randomly pressing things, especially your skip cutscene button, because on the any percent patch that has a huge tendency to cause game crashes. Another thing that you also want to watch out for when you are running for longer sessions is if the game starts to get kind of more than like especially if it's getting over a gigabyte of memory usage you need to restart the game the game has a slight memory leak on the any percent patch um you lose like a few megabytes per load screen that you go through um pretty much you need to reset like every probably like every 30 or 40 loading screens that you go through something like that maybe a little bit less than that but that's kind of the ballpark that you're looking for um just take that as an opportunity to kind of like rest and reset mentally for a moment or whatever i like to keep task manager open while i'm running just in case um or you can just remember to reset quite regularly like um restart your game but do not spam cutscenes do not um what do you call it do not run the game continuously and expect it to not crash um i'm not entirely sure how that applies to new consoles i think the new consoles don't tend to have as many crashing issues but it could just simply be that they don't tend to do as long as sessions we don't have too too many new console runners we have a few though um anyways once you've gotten your second boomerang here the gate will just open so you don't need to worry about the skip at all you could do a little jump across there to cut a little bit of a corner doesn't make too make so much of a difference only a few frames at most do a bite into shipwrecks and i will see you in the next section here all right welcome to shipwrecks this is going to be the second level here um or the first level <laughs> depending on your route but what we're going to start off with is we're just going to be running straight to this kind of like lighter section on the ground there that kind of like lighter section of stone and then you're going to do a bite into that and then you're going to turn to the side i would also usually time a jump there then for this this is a little bit of a funny one you kind of want to just around here that kind of thing this is where you want to jump and then don't do any glide and then just land in the water no glide no glide um and that should just give you the aqua ranks there and you want to time your thing and then you come over to the side ledge grab your way out and then we jump into the water here the further back that you can dive the better um this is kind of just like a general little thing to save time but if you land in the water here or whatever as long as you manage to stay underwater it's better than if you land in the water over here because your movement underwater is faster so generally you want to try and get into the water further back however obviously you don't want to miss your swim entirely it's quite easy to um quite easy to just plop down or whatever and right along the surface i'll try and get it here like that so that's just a fail dive that'll lose you a decent bit of time all right for this one this is a little funny you'll see as i'm approaching ty's head turns to the side this means that he is aggroed on that button so if i just shoot it'll go towards it so pretty much you don't need to do like an you know a no scope there or whatever that kind of thing you don't need to have perfect aim just pay attention for when ty's head flicks to the side um, you do need to be facing off slightly to the button, but not much at all. So I like to come in like this, boom, and then I'm just spamming with my cutscene button. And then I like to, of course, I'll be kind of a little bit higher. So I'll be kind of like up here. You can even do a little um, phase through this fence here. And then you come up, and then I like to come in just at that little change in angle there. And then I'm coming up, and I'm aiming to surface around this point here. Um, I like to hit the surface before I actually wedge myself into the corner. That's a concept called pre-surfacing. Basically, surfacing out of the water takes a moment of time, so you may as well let yourself have that kind of like gliding along the surface moment there or whatever, rather than wedging yourself and losing that speed. So surface like a little smidge before you actually need it. Um, for when you have two boomerangs, you can simply jump up here. You can do just a straight glide to the bilby. That is the fastest method. Um, for the one rang method, you want to jump here, jump here, jump here, and then bite. Um, the easy two rang method is simply getting an extended glide, just a single one, and then doing a bite. That's the old method. Um, it's like half a second slower because you have that like preparation in the air to tie preparing to bite the bilby or whatever. Um, so those are your kind of options there. 
and then from here um, it varies a little bit between one rang and two rang but for one rang basically you want to um, frame buffer your jump or whatever and then kind of curve into the water you want to make sure that you don't hit the side of the what do you call it side of that slope there or whatever just because you can end up with a fail so you want to try and get a little bit of a boost there and then you talk to the seahorse now in single rang this strategy is fairly important to try and get extra time save especially making use of that extra reset efficiency starting in shipwrecks you can get the first seahorse here and then if the tide is just about to turn now it's going back down i hold my walking hotkey and go at a slight angle walking into the seahorse and you see how that made tide then stand up i'm then able to jump over that that is what we call land shark skip the tides whenever you enter the level though are completely random we don't have any way of predicting it or anything so quite often what we'll be able to see is either on the cutscene or we'll be able to look at the tide in the pool and basically determine the like, tide and world cycle and everything like that for when we get into shipwrecks and decide whether we need to reset right at the very beginning there's kind of like a two or three second window so you should have like a I would say at least a 50% chance of being able to get it virtually instantly, maybe a two second chance. Um, each tide cycle is about six seconds. Um, about four to five seconds of it will always be faster than doing the standard method. So I will show you the standard method here. Um, land shark is really, land shark hop is really annoying to get. But anyways, for this one, you get the seahorse and then you want to aim just over to the left of the corner here you don't want to go directly into the corner thank you from <laughs> let me just fix that up you don't want to go directly into the corner because if you do then you're not going to actually be able to stand on the ground properly you'll be stuck in the corner there when you go over here you'll actually be able to stand here and then jump and get over top of that area so that's what you're looking for okay so once again if you go into the corner see how you're not actually able to stand in this case the seahorse came in though but see how that's not really working for me whereas to the side here even not too far away from it but you can see anywhere to the side here you can just run into it and then you get your jump nice and easy um for this one you don't want to glide because for some reason as you're doing it it like gives you this like weird additional slowdown when you do your glide and also makes it so that you're not able to like slide over that bit of terrain very easily so i would recommend not gliding and then just aim up towards that little bit there you'll be nice and easy all right once again diving into the water nice and early there's a little bit of contention about the lines here i will show you what i take um you want to stay high for these sections also keeping your like 3d underwater lines and everything like that is quite important you've got like a good like 10 to 20 seconds that you can save there for most most early runners um so staying high for this section and then i'm going to basically aim to go like a little bit through that like little um shell thing and then i'll be going above this rock so below the shell thing above the rock staying tight above that rock and now i'm just looking to come level through here and then I'm turning in. You can kill that Barracuda, but keep in mind if you're on single rang, that may affect your cycles. And well, if you're on two rangs, that may affect your cycles. And if you're on one rang, your boomerang may not get back in time. Um, for one rang, we like to shoot, like we like to come in at this angle here. And then basically we shoot onto this massively extending hitbox from this door. So kind of like that. And then it will just open the door for us the alternative method which is the method that i would recommend for most beginners is you want to be on your left boomerang cycle and then pretty much you can be anywhere okay i can't be in a scope while i do this unfortunately but you can pretty much be anywhere scoped in pointing within this kind of area it is very lenient okay as long as you are against the right part of the ship so very large area it even extends higher actually even extends higher maybe cuts off around here so anywhere in this area um the way that you want to line it up is see how ty's head is basically at the lower section of well not really the lower section you've got this like little square here or whatever you want to be on this like change in angle in the square here this is where you want to be centered so I bring Ty into that point and then yeah you, you can really be anywhere along this whole way so I think it, it's pretty much like you know the whole way 
it's wild. So just shoot twice and there we go. Anywhere along there, super, super lenient. Um, if for some reason, uh, actually I should have talked about this, but as I'm going into the Thunder Egg, see how I like flicked my camera around? using my momentum to carry me the rest of the way in. That's just to make sure that when you finish the Thunder Egg animation, you're pointing the correct direction. So the way that you can get um, the Thunder Egg there, if you don't know how to do ship clip, is simply to swim around. And then there's a little hole here and you can shoot the bus in. All right. Now the standard way to get up to the nest egg is, I'll do it all the way from the ship actually, just so that you see the whole sequence. So you got your thunder egg there, and now we're coming up, and now we're just going to aim for these palm trees up here. Just there. All right. And then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'd probably come up on this side, honestly, but this side is fine. Essentially, you're going to run up part of this hill, and then right as you're getting near the top here, you'll do your jump, and then you don't need to extend a glide, you just want to aim kind of towards this point here, and then you'll get a ledge grab up here. And then you're going to walk along the wall, but stay facing a decent angle into the wall. That decent angle is going to make sure that you stay up against and into the wall. And then what you do is once you get to around this point here, you're going to jump and you're going to quickly flick your camera out to the side and then hook around to grab onto the ledge that's just going to be up here. Now, the reason for that the reason for this little hook out is if you imagine, you know, I'm just going to draw a, draw like a little house thing here or whatever, um, with some kind of weird awning. If someone jumps up here, they're going to jump up and then get bonked to the side and they're not going to get as high. That's essentially what is happening. So we're going to run up this, jump, get our ledge grab. Stay facing into the wall slightly. You don't need to be 90 degrees like this. I'm just doing that to stall for time. But as long as you're like 10 or 20, 20 degrees, jump, turn out to the side, get a little bit of a flick there. So I'll show that again. Now glide into it and then gliding there with a little jump out. Show it a few more times. Nice and simple. No glide needed for that jump, but it does make it go a little bit faster. For this next one, this is a little bit of a funny one, but basically as you're coming up this line here, you essentially want to come slightly up onto that part, and then you want to jump just here, and then flick out to the side, get an extended gl glide, and land up here without doing a ledge grab. You don't even need to do an extended glide if you do the flick very nicely. I just came off of my arrow keys. <laughs> so you're just using that bit of height. Now the next thing is here to get this next one without getting a ledge grab. Basically all of the ground here is slightly sloped downwards. So you essentially want to jump from further back, but not too far back. If you do it from here, you're probably going to ledge grab because you're on your way back down. So I would recommend ledge uh, jumping from around here. That should be able to get you over just fine. And then simply jump into the thunder egg there. Now I'll just quickly show you the alternative route. This is for one ring. Also, if you don't know how, well, if you're struggling with that method there, the casual method, instead of going to those palm trees here, is you come to the side, and then you can run up this little area here, get a little jump, and then boom, you're up. And then you meet up with the other route there. All right. So this is the one rang method. You come out of the ship here, and then you're coming up by these rocks, basically. And then you want to surface a little bit early and to the left here. Basically, your goal is to come in at a slight angle because there's some weird properties on this wall here. Basically, it's going to be similar to how you can get that um, ground swim in Rainbow Cliffs, the one where like you just like brush up it against the wall and you take like a few seconds to land you're basically going to hit up against this wall and then you're going to slide down slowly and then you'll be able to swim off to the left here that is your goal um if you hit the wall you may 
bonk straight down or you may flick too far out to the side or you may come back down to the water but then have too much momentum and fall back down into the water if you fall back down into the water here the seahorse will be in your way and uh, if you're at a high level that is basically a reset so what this is going to look like is you're going to come in here and you see i get that <laughs> barracuda <laughs> I get that dive across to the side. I get the slow little thing down. That's like that slowing down of the wall basically stops you from sliding into the water. That's why we prefer to do it like this. Anyways, we then swim across to the side here. And then once we get here, want to get above this section just here. So I'm going to go up and quickly turn across to the side. The thing is here, this is basically a little ledge or whatever. If I ever go below this, then it's going to be an overhanging um, section of wall. Whereas this side is all sloping or whatever. You're able to go up that side. So I've gotten over that. Now I can come across here. And then basically what I find gives you really good success right here is maintain your pressure into the wall. You don't want to turn out to the side really aggressively. Just go up to max swim speed or whatever and then just aim to come in kind of around. Keep in mind that you need to follow whatever the shape of the other section is there or whatever. But you basically want to come in within this range. This is what you're looking for. With a really good turn into the wall. And that good turn in, don't worry, you can convert it into speed the moment that you get up here. And then once again, you just need to follow the shape of the wall here. Okay, just here. That area is going to fail you basically. So you just need to go around that and then swim down and boom into the thunder egg just there. So I go up a little and then down and across. Nice and simple. All right, so that is nest egg. Now we're going to come off of here. You can get a bite boost there. And then we're going to use this little piece of grass as our reference. We're basically going to go for a bite just here. And then it's going to make us fall down. With a fast fall. If you don't get the fast fall, just glide your way down. You'll be fine. If you are playing on single rank, then you will need to make sure that tires rotated the correct direction. And then point them into the bilby to get an air bite save. That is your fast fall. All right, now, coconuts. This is one of the casual player's worst nightmares. Have fun with this one. <laughs> also, there's a nice little ledge bite just here. The wall likes to eat it quite often, though. Um, so for single ring, this is... Eh, I'll show the very beginner method first. So you're going to want to like jump up here or whatever, shoot this coconut, and then aim to go in between these two trees, and there you go. That's it. If you accidentally fall into the sand or whatever on that first coconut, all good. Wait for it to sink down and then you can actually come back over top of it and jump on it again anyways. If you do fall into the sand though and you're just completely abandoned in the middle of the sand or whatever, so you know, you're in this kind of situation, the way that you save yourself is A and D. You just spam the two of them. If I add W in between, see how Ty doesn't really get out of the sand at all? He's continuing to go down. So if you're about to die or whatever because of air, just come off of W and that will let you start to raise out of the sand again. You do move forward when you have W though. Um, it's just hard to maintain air. So anyways, just shoot that first one, jump on it, and glide over in between these two trees, and you'll be all good. The intermediate two rang method is to basically go and shoot that second coconut, and then you need to get a fairly decent extended glide over here, and then you'll glide over towards that little sandbar, and then just spam your glide, and you'll come over top of it. If you are not spamming your glide, you won't get it. Um, if you do fail it, just come over to the side here, similar to the other side, and you can recover it just like that. Nice and easy. The single rang method is a little bit more complicated. This one, you basically want to run up to here, shoot the coconut, turn off to the side, and I failed it. <laughs> this one is quite a bit more difficult, but essentially you're going to shoot the coconut, and the moment after you shoot the coconut, you're going to come to the side and then you're going to land on the tree and then you're going to shoot the other coconut. I like to do this with a scope. Karma likes to just land on the tree, then land on the coconut and then no scope the other coconut. But the thing is, if the other coconut is in the air, it can actually bonk you. So I just do this one out of consistency. So come across to the side there. I forgot to shoot it. 
and that's kind of what I was talking about there. The coconut can bonk you if you're unlucky. And then you want to shoot the middle one. You can do this all on one rank <laughs> without any ledge grabs, but I kind of did some weird hesitating stuff there. So let's just go over this a little bit more in detail. Also, once again, if the coconut falls down or whatever, you can rescue with it just like that, nice and simple. All right. So once again, for coconuts, you're going to come over here. Um, if you did the single rang, sorry, if you did the standard method, just shoot one or two coconuts. And then just spam your glide there and you'll be good, basically. As long as you don't spam it too hard, you know. <laughs> so don't cut your glide short with it or whatever, but, you know, just be aware of bonking your head on the coconut above you there. Um, for the other two methods, ideally you want to shoot the middle coconut and then you can do your jump there and then you really need to do like a late delay jump if you want to do the single rank coconut. If not, then you don't need to worry about, sorry, you can just bonk your head and then just do some glides and you'll be fine on the double rank. That is coconuts. Um, yeah, in all cases, just like if for some reason or whatever you like, you know, you shot the first coconut or whatever and then you're somehow, you find yourself over here, simply just shoot that coconut out and then you just need to wait like six or seven seconds for this coconut to come down low enough. Just get yourself as nice and high as you can in the sand and there you go, rescued. All right, we get some ledge bites down there and then for this one, you get a bit of a difference between the two. Standard, you would just do an extended glide up there, nice and easy. It does need a glide. For a single rang, you want to jump from as far back as you can so that you can get into your next jump as soon as possible. I keep on getting framed out. <laughs> and then you want to let yourself get a little bit of height, do a little walking mode turn around there. Once again, diving into the water as soon as you can. These seahorses have quite big hip boxes for where you can get them. So you can legitimately just pull this kind of line here. Um, just waiting for my drawing thing to come up. You can literally just pull this kind of line and then just immediately go around. So you see there. And now what you'll notice is the slope of the terrain here. Okay, this is pretty much the case everywhere in shipwrecks. But basically the lower you are, the further you need to go around things. Whereas the higher you are, the less you have to go around all of these curves. So it gives you a faster line overall, the higher up in the water you are. In this case though, I don't want to go entirely up because I do need to be slightly down to get this one here. So now I'll turn and then in this case, there's like a little bit of inverted height there as well. That's also why I didn't go as high. But now I've pretty much passed all of the inverted heights or anything like that. So I'm just staying high so that I can take tight lines. For this one, you may want to shoot some of the basses there depending on their cycles on single rang and also um standard route after biting that bilby i would recommend going w and d this is going to have your camera at 45 degrees it makes it a lot easier to shoot that basket and then you can dive in the water um i was just a little bit of a potato regarding all of my seahorses and such there and that time i hit the water <laughs> anyways here just watching out for the sea bass um the way that these guys check for you is they try and but they try and eat you by their mouth okay so you can get really close to them it's all about where their mouth is so you'll see that he turned around and flicked his mouth into me you need to be aware of what road uh what direction they can turn just so that you know where and what to avoid exactly also going right underneath their mouth as well can also do it so you can see here boom not too easy, but there you go. You can go like right underneath their mouth, tickle it, and then they get you. Okay, sorry, I thought he got me. <laughs> Anyways, here, okay, once again, you're coming out of this area high as you can, because if you're going around, then, well, if you're going low, then you find yourself needing to pull all of these wide lines and everything like that, instead of just taking the direct line there. forgot about that cutscene. <laughs> so nice and high and you come around here and then for this one you basically just want to pre-surface a little bit and then come up a little bit before that corner and then turn throw and you need to be really careful of the seahorses behind you. I didn't really think of it there which is why why they kind of got me but essentially as you're coming around 
Um, I like to stay too far left and then surface and then I kind of like flick out to the side a little bit. Alternatively, you can come in flat, come in on the inside, or you can come in wide and then also come in on the inside. There's quite a few ways that you can take that, but whatever allows you to avoid the seahorses. Now here, um, there was some old methods of spire swimming where you would actually pay attention to the tides at this section and then try and follow all of that. Um, for when you would do your surfacing and such, and then you would lay it along the surface. But instead, we actually just do a um, a surface wedge setup, um, which is the most consistent and fast fast setup or whatever. So I will show you what this looks like. You basically swim around the mountain here, and then you see this big jutting out part. This is basically indicating, okay, the bilby is coming up. You can also see it just up there as well. And then just before the bilby, there's basically this like change in angle on the ground here. So this change in angle comes up like this. And then it also kind of comes down like this or whatever, a little bit like that. This is kind of the point that I want to swim into here. This wedge will give me a nice setup for my seahorses. Basically this wedge gives me, it gives you multiple angles that you can approach the seahorse with your dive so that you can make do with a lot more tides than usual just on that angle change there. That's something that Karma found. So you come in through here and you can see that seahorse is set up fairly nicely so that when it's a higher tide, I'll be able to get that quite nicely. The tides do affect this quite a bit. When the tide sinks down, I'll be able to swim away quite safely. Um, if the tide, like depending on where the seahorse is, this is basically a tideless seahorse or like an 80% tideless seahorse, that kind of thing which basically means that I can dive at almost any time that I want and I'll be able to get it really reliably. Um, like the seahorse, I won't hit it and then just lose my lose my swim. Um, what you're looking for is a seahorse that is deep enough that you don't lose your swim, but then also is shallow enough or whatever that you don't end up going deeper into the water so that then when it's a high tide or whatever, you are in too deep water and you lose your swim. So with a spire swim, you would then swim around this way. Um, while in the thunder egg animation i quite often get my controller in position so now i'm swimming i'm holding w and i've moved like my right hand or whatever i've moved it to my controller once i've set my ankle here and then i transition onto controller here and then you're swimming up it's a little bit complicated but essentially you want to i'll point out a few more parts on it um as well before i go over the standard method but please keep in mind that this is one of the last skips that you should be adding. So once again, this is around where you get it. Um, let's see, see a horse here. I think that's the one. A little bit sketchy, but we get it. All right, so turning my camera in there and I've transitioned. So here, what I'm looking for is to go above this line basically. And then that will let me get up and around this part onto the wall. If I go below here, I'll just flop down because of negative slopes. So I'm going up and then you can see the whole shapes of this and everything changing. I'm having to rotate to the left and now I'm pressing up on my thing to turn tie downwards. And then that gets me up here. And then I'm basically just holding in tight here, and then I'm trying to aim it towards L to get the thunder egg there. Overall, if you do that perfectly, you can save like 13, 14 seconds. But to get it perfectly is very difficult. Um, currently, only free runners actually do this regularly in runs. Um, it is not an easy strategy by any means. So the alternative is you get the thunder egg. Also, just keep in mind, like if I'm trying to no reset this, it is not unusual for me to lose 10 to 30 seconds on the skip so really do not force yourself into doing this one there's much higher value skips being doom skip mill skip um two up skip this is pretty much like second to last thing that you should add like this and single rank are the two last things that you should implement with the current strategies at least shown in this tutorial so you run up here, you can do a single jump. You don't want to continue jumping though, because this is too steep to allow you to continue walking after you land, but you can come up here, do one more jump just to get over that last little bit. And then you're basically just doing like little jumps and Ds to turn you out to the side. Alternatively, you can jump and then you can use your mouse side to side like that. It's a little bit funny. 
but that's another way that you can maintain your line more smoothly. Alternatively, you could use the joystick, however, swapping to it just for this is a little redundant, I feel. So anyways, you want to cut that corner. Uh, do not bite into that cutscene. It does not save any time. You actually need to wait until after the bite. I occasionally do that and I kick myself every time. Anyways, bite into the mushroom here and then you're going to walk forward, get a little bite boost off of these umbrellas if you like. And then we dive back into the water and we're going to try and stay as high as we can through most of these sections here. So once again, high, tight lines, and then something that you can kind of keep in mind is where these frills are swimming kind of denotes the hitbox for these seahorses. Once again, staying tight, staying high allows me to take tighter lines. Also, those barracudas, they have super tall hitboxes. I'm actually just going to show you here. So I'm way above this dude and see how I bonk him still. So just shoot them. They'll they'll lose so much time if you just swim into them. So anyways, stay nice and high. Keep in mind the kind of box of the patrol of the frills. And similar thing here. Box of the patrol of the frills and turn. Watch out for that box. Hit box. That one caught me pretty badly, not going to lie. And then just finally come over to Aurora. Some people like to exit the water. I don't. And then exit level. That is it. You can split um, either immediately after exit level or when the, um, when the pause fill in or whatever. That's when I do it. Um, karma splits on immediate though and that is shipwrecks that'll bring us up to the next level walk in the park nice and simple movement just walk over it's a walk in the park <laughs> into the next level okay so it did just occur to me that i didn't actually go over the method of how to get your dive properly with um spire swim so let's just go over that in a bit more detail so swimming into that little, I'll pretty much go over the whole thing again, to be honest. Um, swimming into that little angle there, that's going to give you that good seahorse lay. I didn't do it particularly well there. It's a bit hard when you don't have the belly for reference sometimes. There we go. That should get it. All right. So this is basically a tideless one here. <laughs> and I throw it. A little bit too far left, yeah. It's hard to get this without the bill we crate, trust me. Okay, so it pushes you, there we go. So, big thing is here, you want to use your walking mode, okay? And you kind of want to go, like, you want to use your walking mode and then let go of it. And then give yourself a moment, and you're basically aiming to see what you can do to make yourself land at an exact position keeping in mind the exact position on the trajectory that you would get with a dive, not with a bite. The reason why we're trying to do that is we are basically trying to graze the ground and then have the seahorse stop us. So we're aiming to basically... I'll just draw it in here. You're basically aiming to... It <laughs> didn't want to go very nice for me there. You're basically aiming to come in from here so you jump up you're not moving very quickly then you add in your full speed or whatever and then you know what, let's do it from a bit of a flasher line here okay so you're going to jump from up here you're going to go mostly straight up with your walking mode or whatever and then you're going to add in your full speed running not really getting that high enough then full speed running and then basically your dive is going to have you land and hit the water here and then you bonk the seahorse or you can hit both of them at the same time any or and basically the seahorse stops you from going into deeper water and then you'll want to scope so that ty doesn't continue to like move and like wiggle along or whatever and then get caught into deeper water with that scope you're going to do a scope turn and you're going to turn in towards the ground and then depending on how deep you see you are you're basically going to make a decision and go okay am i going to wait for the next low tide so that i have the best chances of getting off or whatever um or am i going to just swim away immediately those are kind of the decisions that you're making there also another thing is the moment that you go from walking mode to running mode or whatever like letting go of your walking mode keep in mind that you're you know, you're walking here, you're walking, 
walking, and then run. Okay? So you're letting go of that walking mode here. Um, you want to wait just a moment. You still want to be on your way up. It doesn't have to be on your way up. But essentially, like you don't want to leave it too late. But a little bit after this is then when you want to add in your bite. So this is going to be your bite input around here. That's essentially the whole input sequence that you're looking to do. Once you land here, you then scope, and then you let go of your scope and you swim out. That is essentially the whole structure of how the skip works. So waiting for my tide. That time I didn't really aim it in properly to the seahorse, so I just ricocheted off the side. So coming into that little wedge. This one, this is a low tide seahorse only, basically, because of how far away it is. However, once again, it was too far away in total, so I just couldn't get it. Bad lay. Alright, that one looks okay. This one's like a mid tide. And there we go. Did my scope turn. Interesting thing with your scope turn. If you turn it too quickly, it won't actually flick it. But yeah, that is essentially everything that you will need to know with Spire Swim. If you are really wanting to push that one and you want to build your consistency with it, the best place to go is to go to the Discord and ask any questions. We are more than help, happy to help you with this one, but this one is definitely one of the harder ones. You shouldn't really worry about this one until you're going for sub 30. Anyways, actually to walk in the park now. All right, the opening to walk in the park is pretty simple. Pretty much going to turn off to the right here. Going to run in between these two trees. And then just around here, there's going to be a little cutscene. You want to bite into that. Skip cutscene, jump, jump. If you're lucky, you can get over that rock, um, even without an extended glide. Keeping in mind, extended glides slow you down slightly. Um, very minuscule amount, though. This one, you're looking to cut the corner as you jump over it. And then here, you've got a choice. You can either do the easy method or the harder method. Um, as long as you understand the harder method, though, it, it's pretty easy. Um, the easiest way to go for this is to go for in between these two bushes. Essentially, um, within this kind of box here or whatever, these bushes will stop you from being able to walk beyond this point. So you just want to walk into these directly. Okay. And then you'll take off from here and you'll basically aim to get up to around this point up here, that kind of thing. And then once you get up there, you don't want to turn. So right now, Ty is facing this direction. Okay. He is facing that direction 100%. Okay. And also make sure no glides. Okay. No glides. Okay? Glides will kill it. Okay? You're Once you get over to the top section here, you're then going to turn to the left, and then you're going to look to follow it down. Okay? Um, follow it down, but turning to the right as much as you can without fighting it to the point that you would lose your speed and that you would slide down. So I'll bail out. Um, instead of getting them here, but you'll see how I get up, okay, and see how I get up there, and basically, because of not turning left, I'm fighting it, and then it makes me slide back down, so I need to fight it to get up this hill, because basically, we're looking to fight the hill as fast as we can, and once we've gotten over the top of this crest here, okay, that top part of that slope, okay, this is what I call the crest here, once you've gotten over that, okay, that is when you can turn. So once you crest, you then turn, and it converts it into speed, because you have built height, not in the, like, you, you have essentially built height instead of speed here. This is what you're trading off here. You're trading off your forward speed to build up height, because the thing is, once you have, you know, fought all of the height that there is for the section or whatever, you then don't need to fight that height anymore, and you can then convert it fully into the speed this way, and then go around. That is essentially your goal. So you're fighting, fighting, turn, okay? If you turn too far to the left, okay, then, you know, you'll come out of it. But you're basically looking to, like, balance the pressure 
and then turn in turn in just enough so that you get through the skip. I'm intentionally failing these. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to intentionally fail them even. I'll get a ground swim and get back up there. Feels bad, man. There's a ground swim just here. I know there is. It's used in a reroute. Anyway, so you get that ground swim around there. Ooh, thought I lost it there. So, slide one skip once again. You run at it, hit the plants or whatever, turn, turn. So, hit the plants, up, turn left, and then turn right. So, up, turn left, turn right. So, jump, crest, left, right. Jump, crest, left, right. Jump, crest, left, right. Okay? Now, the alternative, instead of doing slide one skip, doing it on that early one here, this one is like six to eight seconds slower or something like that. Sorry, it's not six to nine. Um, basically, you just want to jump and glide into this little corner here. You can do it off of the box, but either or. Then from here, you simply like jump out towards this tree and then just glide out to the side, turn a little bit to the left so that you don't fight it too hard, avoiding any slide downs. That's the old method. Um, very consistent. If you're struggling with the other one, it's a good backup. Anyways, for this next one, there's two options. You can either do a fast fall out of your early slide one and you can get a swim here. It can be a little ground scammy at times. So I wouldn't recommend this one for new runners. This one is only really something that you want to go for when you are going for the community golds and such. There we go. It's got a pretty tight ground swim timing. Anyways, the way that you can recognize it is you've got these two like knobbly rocks pointing out here, and then you've also got the two pillars here. Um, it'll be, you want to go to the knobbly rock that is closer to the right pillar, and is also, um, how do I put it? Yeah, it's basically just heading towards that like waterfall with the log egg and such. You want to head down towards, like away from that bilby, towards more of those logs and stuff like that. So you've got these two knobbly rocks here or whatever, and then you basically want to line up off of the side of this or whatever, run into it, jump dive. Remembering the rules of ground swimming, if nothing happens, it was too early, but you were in a viable spot. If you get a bite fail or whatever, um without a dive animation, then it means that your alignment wasn't good, or you did your bite too late, or you were just spamming your bite. This is one of those ones where spamming it just does not work really. I love to prove myself wrong. <laughs> it can work, but I still don't recommend it. I've had too many fails from it. You do you. Anyways, so swim down towards the right. Um, it is possible that you can get what we call a ground scam there. Basically, you get the dive, but then Ty's face just still hits the ground and you lose like two seconds. It's it's scammy, so we call it ground scamming. Anyway, so you swim down the swim down this whole valley here, and then because you're over shallow water, you're able to swim a decent amount off of the surface, if you remember from Rainbow Cliffs in the mechanics section. That means that you're able to swim up over this little lip and then start swimming up the waterfall here. Now, you'll see that the shape of this waterfall is quite peculiar. Essentially, all of this section up here, these are all overhanging slopes, so these will knock you out of your ground swim. On the flip side, over here, these are all negative, hang like negative slopes or whatever. These will knock you out of your ground swim. And then there's also a overhanging slope here. There's also an overhanging slope here. And the real kicker, there's overhanging slopes all through here. This one extends actually all the way up until about here. So you essentially need to get through like this little window here. That is what you're looking for. And you can see it quite clearly from this angle. This is what you're aiming to get through. You're aiming to get through this little corridor here, okay? If you go either side of it, you can hit an overhanging slope and you can lose it on either side there. Setting up your 
swim with just a solid angle that you hold the whole way through. It can work, but I don't recommend it personally. I would prefer to adjust and actually move Ty actively into this spot instead of letting, letting fate and like little bumps and stuff like that on terrain determine it. So I'm going to come up here and then of course watch out for these overhanging slopes here, here, and here. And you want to go through one of these gaps. This one as well is quite, um, quite scary, but you can do it. Anyways, you talk to Ken and once again, shallow water, you can be above. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to be a little bit above and then flick down the moment that I make contact with this. That's going to look like this. If you're on controller, the way that I would recommend is that you come in on the left side and then face in towards the side there. Let me just turn off the painting there. There we go. All right, so swimming through here, hopefully I don't drown. And then here, also just make sure that you're not swimming over top of these rock thingies too aggressively. Make sure that you're looking down pretty hard. And then once you're halfway across this, you wanna shoot, aiming kinda underneath the bats. And then take nice tight lines here. Um, let me just lose my swim here real quick so that I don't drown as I'm explaining. All right. So as you're coming out of this area here, because there's water underneath, you can just maintain your height. You can just fly out of it nicely. Okay. So you want to swim through that gap. And then you want to basically just go around this level. And then you'll come into this little wedge here. And then this is going to be a standard slope or whatever so you can swim up it and then when you do this at maximum swimming speed your swimming radius on keyboard and mouse will essentially allow you to turn perfectly into the fun direct there the key on this one so that you don't lose your ground swim is keeping note of where you're making contact with the log okay so i come around here and the key is to make contact with the log anywhere on this section okay Anywhere up here, this is starting to hit overhanging slope territory. So you need to basically make contact with the log here. You ideally want to be facing up like this as you're at this point, and then you do your full hook, and then that will put you into the thunder egg there. Don't do any bites or um, bites or jumps off of this. Just come down and then land, and then you make sure that you're facing like straight into the wall. Try not to do it at too much of an angle, otherwise you can lose your swim or whatever. This one really likes to be ground scammy, so don't feel too bad if you do get a few ground scams here. Um, to get back into the cave, this is more complicated than getting out of the cave. Um, basically, you get a whole bunch of overhanging slopes off of these rocks. So you get overhanging slopes here, overhanging slopes here and overhanging slopes especially on here okay your best bet is to either come in at one of these gaps or whatever or is to come in at an angle like that because these are not very aggressive overhanging slopes it's mainly an overhanging slope because of the angle at which ty can go down he's not able to go perfectly straight down ty is only able to go down at this kind of angle so if you have a slope that is like relatively steep so like you know the slope is like this steep or something like that you can see that ty is getting further and further away from the slope and eventually he will no longer be supported by the terrain that is essentially what happens on these ones so they're not overhanging per se it's just his turning radius doesn't actually make it work so you can see the actual shapes on the rocks here you can see how they're very close to being overhanging but it's just because of the speed at which you come off of them that you can lose it. Because you don't have the turning radius to stay in contact with the ground. So because of that, that's why we like to turn to the side. Because it effectively makes Ty's ra like radius of going down more effective. Anyways, once you get past here, you shoot the, shoot the bats. Um, I would recommend that you try and get in the habit of not losing your swim here. It's not too big a deal if you do for the time being, but there is a, a um, there is a reroute that is being worked on to add in bilbies for this level. Um, it's very complicated though. Don't stress about it, but essentially it is possible to maintain your ground swim after this mission here. Um, 
we're still figuring out how to get that consistent but essentially you would then go through and do other parts of the level in reverse getting a whole bunch of bilbies and such really cool route really cool route anyways after you have gotten the thunder egg there you're going to run forward and then there is three or four methods that you can use something like that the fastest method um outside of bat swim is getting a fast fall down the waterfall and then turning around and then going for a scope turn there swimming up aim for this and you go up i was a little bit too far to the right there which is why i fell back in the cave but that one is essentially once again using the fact that you're over shallow water letting you swim up quite a bit and then you come up nice and flat up onto the side here you turn around and then there is an invisible wall around here which you can see me bonking into i didn't want to lose my swim there but it happened and i didn't want to slide out of it but it's damn <laughs> i tried that's how you can get back over as well um practice mod does Actually, I'm not sure if it has one for this one. But yeah, anyways, there's an invisible wall in line with this here, basically. You just need to get to the right of it. Um, when you're going over this, make sure that you're swimming with W. And just hold your W instead of pressing spacebar. Because the thing is, if you spam spacebar, you're essentially going to get into a trading water state, and then you'll jump out of it, and you'll do this. So that will lose you a bit of time. Thank you, ground scan. All right, let's go over the easier methods now because that's the harder method that involves the like reverse fast full scope turn nonsense. It only saves about half a second. Um, so the other alternative is getting your ground swim over here, similar to log egg. And then you can either go up this right side, similar to the other one, which in my opinion is a bit harder. Or the very easy one is just coming over to the side here and then going up this crack and then you go around around that thing as usual. Keep in mind as well that if you are struggling to get this one, then you can just take the water slide there. It will lose you about 30 or 40 seconds though. Um, also, on a note of the waterfall and everything like that as well, after getting your ground swim or if you struggle to get your ground swim here, these are kind of the options that you want to take. If you can get your ground swim here, it never hurts to take a free attempt um, to try and swim up the waterfall. But if you fail it, then I would just recommend going into this launcher, talking to Ken, and then just doing bats. And then once you've finished bats, you can then get log egg and then go across. That would be my recommendation. Um, if you lose your ground swim part way through, so let's say that, you know, you you got here or whatever you can go through you can shoot the bats for the first time okay these are all backups here you can shoot the bats for the first time but then what i will say is wait for the bats to get here okay and then what you want to do is you want to then be around here and then you'll scope those bats they're going up you have about 15 seconds at this point You can get up here, and then you can get log egg, and then you can come across here, and then go to the launcher, okay? I think this is probably going to be your fastest backup. By no means do I want you to shoot the first one, like shoot the bats for the first time, and then get log egg. If you do that, you will lose time, because then you need to get back in the cave and everything like that, and it's just really not efficient, okay? Um, and if you already have gotten the log egg or whatever at this point, it's up to you whether you do slide two or not, but slide two skip isn't too difficult. So I would highly recommend learning it. It's one of the higher value skips for not too much difficulty. Next up is turkeys. Turkeys is something that a lot of runners hate. I am pretty fine with them. Double turkeys are a bit annoying sometimes though. Um, we don't like the RNG in terms of direction that they choose, but in terms of being able to get them, they're not an issue. Um, there's only like one second of like RNG or whatever regarding what direction they go, but in terms of difficulty, get, difficulty to get them, they're identical. So for this one, you basically want to hang it. And if you want to play it really conservative, just come over to this bush here. Now, what 
most people will do is what I call hitting the turkey's ass. They will basically run up this way and then they'll go like, okay, I'm going to bite the turkey here. And then the turkey will either go like this or the turkey will go like this. And because you're at the bottom of the turkey, the turkey will just instantly run away from you. Okay, what you need to do is you need to go in front of where the turkey is. You need to, instead of going straight at the turkey, go to one of its potential paths. So this turkey is either going to go right or it's going to go left. So I'm going to go in, coming, approaching from the right, and then here, okay, I'm going to try and bite towards the turkey's head. Okay, so the turkey is facing here. Its head is over here, okay, and then you've got the turkey's bottom over here or whatever. Tie essentially then just bites you can even bite like way in front of it. Like you could bite over here. Okay. You could bite here and then the turkey runs into your bite and it will still get, get collected or whatever. So bite in front of the turkey approach from in front of where the turkey could be. And if the turkey runs left, then the thing is you can just cut corners and go around here and get ahead of the turkey and then do the same thing right in front of the tree. Going left is in fact the faster way. Going right the turkey goes the wrong direction for a little bit and you're not able to have the turkey get like quite as good a position or whatever. It loses about a second or something, uh, half a second. And then there's half a second, depending on where the thunder egg goes, the thunder egg can go in all sorts of directions or whatever. Okay. So I'm going to approach the turkey from the right and I'm going to way over bite in front of it. Okay. In that case, the turkey didn't go there. So I'll try and show you here way over bite in front of it. There we go. Not an issue. So bite in front of the turkey, that is the way. Um, I will go over a few more turkey backups here because this is one that a lot of people do struggle on. Um, actually, I'll finish off this and then I'll do the turkey backups. So after you get the thunder egg, remember we're not getting bilbies on this one, but for this, I'd like to approach the, approach the tree holding S and A, kind of like that. And then I swap to W and A. Uh, sorry, D and D and S, that kind of thing. And then you're looking to jump pretty much right when you get in. And then for this one, okay, if you're not pressing anything, it's quite easy to get what we call a um, bounce glitch or whatever. If you're kind of like right in the corner and you have let go of your input, you can quite often get this thing where you just don't get any bounce from it. Um, another thing that quite often messes people up is you see how, like, when you start moving in a direction or anything like that, Ty can have quite a big turning radius, okay? So you need to be aware of where he's pointing beforehand. So this is what it looks like when we're doing it properly. Nice and simple. Um, you don't need to learn how to do a fast fall here. You would usually do a main menu at the top there. But essentially, make sure that you're holding your direction inputs or whatever. Um, you can also hold your glide as well. Just keep in mind that that can affect some of your turning radiuses as well. You don't need to spam your glide or anything like that or time it. I'm just holding it here the whole time. Like my hand is on spacebar once and I'm getting like e a glide for each one. Okay. So nice and simple. So first one is S, A, W, D, S. I was trying to say it too much. So D, S, D, ah. D, S, land on the front of it, A, W, D. And that'll get you up there. And then you need to come off of your D once you're kind of like lining into the fundraig there. Um, this is the tightest one usually because you're skipping one of the lily pads. So do feel free to add a glide at least on that one. Anyways, that is the level there. Um, I will load back into it and show you a few more turkey backups. All right. So, more turkey backups, okay? I'm just going to throw my boomerang whenever I would have bet, okay? So, approaching from that right side here, would have bet there. Going in front of it here, I'm coming around the side of it here, and then see how I'm going to be able to approach from in front, so that even if he goes this way, or if he goes that way, no matter what, I would be able to go into him. So, would have been able to get him just fine there. And then here, once again, to the side, 
no matter what way he goes, I can get an angle that I can get an approach in on him. Nice and simple. So it's all about getting on the inside of him, getting in front of him, so that no matter what, you can just bonk straight into him, basically. Nice and simple. So as you can see, Turkey isn't really too much of a concern. This is one of the ones that can be a little bit more awkward to recover on. But yeah, so you can see there, like, he can duke you out sometimes, but that's only when he's already gone the wrong direction. In that case, the frog was in the way, so that got in my way a bit there. But here, like, you can bite way, way early. Anyways, that is Walk in the Park done. Let's just bring that straight into Bull's Pen. Assuming the save file has everything here. Which I think it does. Yeah, it does. All right. So Bull's Pen, basically. Well, damn. <laughs> I forgot forgot that it wasn't going to let me do the pausing there or whatever. But essentially, your goal is to head towards this first pillar here before the bull starts charging. So I'll do that nice and quickly here. So walking up to the bull. And then I'm standing next to the pillar and I'm doing a bite. Um, what you're looking to do on this is you're looking to stand slightly closer than halfway there. And then get your bite taking you over that like halfway line. Um, it's a little bit tight to explain with all of the stuff there. Now on this third one, instead of standing to the side here like this on those first two and then doing a bite over it. Okay. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to hide behind this pillar until he starts walking and then go in front of it. That is going to avoid him doing a little pawing animation on the ground. That saves us about one or two seconds. Also, every time that we avoid being hit on the on all of the pillars except for the last one, saves you about a second. So for this one, I'm going to wait for him to throw two boulders. Oh, sorry, I'm going to wait for him to throw all his boulders and then take two and a fraction steps. So... One, two, and now I'm in front. When I say in front, I am beyond that halfway point where he can make vision with me. And then once I'm beyond that halfway point, I then turn around and then I'm set up just like I was on all of those previous ones so that I'm then able to bite across that line and be safe. But you only want to do it like once he is like here, okay? If you do it too early, then he will basically just walk around the pillar and just go like, you know, pulling circles everywhere. All right, so a little bit funny on my timing there because I was doing all of the drawing, but there we go. And that is Bull's Pen, and that is Hub 1 done. There's the flame ranks, and we'll jump back in for Hub 2 in just a moment. Couple seconds, more like a couple of days. I was sick for a bit. Anyways, let's jump into hub two here. So you've got your flame rings here. Um, next step is going to be running up to hub two. There's two options for this. So right now I'm just showing you the beginner method. This is what you will use when you first start running the game. I would probably recommend this all the way up until like a 35 minute time. The alternative is something we call mission impossible. Um, mission impossible only saves around five seconds and it can, like, if you fail it, it's basically like a 20-something second time loss if you fail it too badly. In other ways, it only loses five seconds. Um, I would recommend that you start by going to Snow Warriors because when you do swap to Mission Impossible, that is going to be the level order that you'll start with. However, technically, it is faster to go to Bridge on the River Ty if you are doing the standard, like, beginner opening or whatever because it is closer to this entry here but not the case with Mission Impossible. So I'll show you what Mission Impossible looks like here now. So you jump up here, and then we go to the left of this, um, go to the left of that little light beam. I'll just go through this again a little bit slower. So you want to jump immediately out of this little doorway here. Um, some people like to bonk their head on here to cut the height of their jump a bit shorter, otherwise then you splat onto the ground especially if you do a glide there as well, um, if you do an extended glide. So it's just something to watch out for. For me, I like to do a double tap on my jump. So see how that makes me go shorter by just tapping twice quickly. 
So I'm going to jump up here and then I do double tap on my jump and then I am aiming. Also make sure that you try and get your camera through the doorway nicely. And then if you notice here, I'm hitting an invisible wall right now. If I try and do my ground swim here, I'm just going to do a bite. So you actually need to be to the left of this little light beam here that just goes up. So you want to be on the left side of that there. You'll be able to get your ground swim just fine on this side of it. And general rules of your timing on ground swimming between nothing happening and a bite happening, that's how you're going to want to time out your bite. So nice and simple. All right, then we swim up and turn around here. We don't do a scope turn there um, just because I'm not entirely sure, but <laughs> we just don't. Um, and then you want to swim around this little um, stairway here just because sometimes you can get caught on it if you stay too far to the left there. So just be aware of that. So swim around it. And now this little bush here, okay, this gives you a good reference point to work with. You want to go on the left side of this thing here, okay, this little tree bush thingy, because on the right side, just over here, you hit an overhang here, okay, this overhang will knock you out of your swim. And then there's also some overhangs around these areas here. Um, so just go up the left side of this little bushy thingy and you'll be good. Another thing that people quite often do as well is they will turn up before they actually make contact with the wall and that will make them lose their swim, okay? Because you're no longer being supported by any terrain underneath you, okay? So it's very important that you go to the left of that little tree thingy and then you make contact with it and then you turn up. So once again, left of that little light bit. Swimming up here. Left of that bit. And then once again here, especially with this one being quite a bit taller, people really like to turn early on this one and they lose their swim right here. If you do lose the swim right here, you will have lost like six or seven seconds, something like that. You can then just back it up by running into the cave, but obviously not ideal. You're basically forfeiting any time loss that you would have, uh, sorry, time, time gain that you would have had. Instead, what you want to do is you want to swim up here, turn to the side, and then you see how as I swim off of the front there, I lose, like I start going into this like little falling state or whatever with Ty like swimming across the surface of the water. Basically as he's falling down, you're going to be like in that kind of like swimming across state or whatever, you're falling down and then you jump out of it. The reason why you need to jump out of it is because you will end up falling short if you don't jump out of it. But then the other thing is you don't want to be jumping out of it immediately. If you jump out of it, the moment that you, that you come off there, um, you'll actually end up, you will make it, like you will get enough distance basically. However, you will end up taking full damage and that full damage will just have you splat and fall off the side. So we're going to then, from around this area that we land here, we're just gonna take, you know, one or two taps on our extended glide, that goes into Snow Worries, okay? So that is Mission Impossible there. I'll continue on with Snow Worries in a moment. Twelve. Thirteen. There we go. So that was a thirteen, fourteen attempt, something like that. That is quite quite common for lawn swim. Um occasionally you'll get people going like, you know, I got it three times in a row, it's consistent, but eh. We we've put in a lot of time on this one. If anyone does figure out how to get that one consistently, we'd love to, we'd love to hear it. <laughs> Anyways, so with lawn swim, um, of course, not easy to get. But once you get it, you need to make sure that you swim downwards so that you don't run out of height. Because technically, there's water underneath you here, which is why you can get a decent bit above the ground. But you need to swim down before you get too high. So, anyways, you then take your swim up here. And then you will go for this cutscene. And then you turn left here. And then you bite the spell bear. Now, because we are running on hardcore for um, top runs and any percent, um, the respawn route isn't particularly viable for Lawn Swim. And we would rather take our easier men easier menuing. Um, however, like because of the new, newer version of Millskip, we're actually not sure whether um, Respawn Route even saves any time anymore. So anyways, the standard way of um, coming out of this pool though, is you simply just swim up here, 
and then you're continuing to run up here. Now, jumping up the hills as usual, um, as you come up this area here, you can mess with a bit more fancy movement. You would do a bite into that cutscene there. You do a bit more fancy movement here where you jump on the rocks, just saves you like half a second. Then we bite the bilby here, jump, jump, and remember the jumping up the slopes, saving you time. This is the biggest instance of it. Also, if you have track body on jump off, it will do this like random jerky stuff with your camera. In fact, I will just show you that here. Um, controls, camera. So see how it's like pulling my camera off to the side? That is caused by track body on jump being off. So just bear that in mind. <laughs> Alright, so for this one you want to jump basically the moment that you make contact with the bottom stair. And then that will allow you to get over here. And then you can cut that corner a little bit tighter. And then you're looking to cut that one a little bit as well. And you're going across this at the side here. Alright, now... For this one, I recommend that you have standard boomerangs out and that you cycle so that you're on right boomerang, just so that you're aware of what direction your boomerang is going to curve. The reason why I do standard boomerang here is the standard boomerang has longer range than the flame ring. All right. So for this, you need to be really aware of like where all the spiders and stuff are positioned. If you do this perfectly, you can do this um, completely like you can do this pretty much at like rain cooldown speed and then also make progress towards the thing as well. Um, I'll show you the best that I can do here, but the order goes red, orange, yellow, green, blue. So what I did there is I shot four of them and then I left my scope and then jumped and shot at the final one while the spiders were in the middle of their attack there. That is the best way to do it, the fastest way to do it. Um, if you need to bite a few of the spiders on the way, do not worry about that, okay? I just showed the advanced way of doing it, okay? But biting a few spiders is only going to lose you like a second for every spider that you do, okay? So don't be too stressed about doing that perfectly. All right, so we're going to turn around and we're going to use what we call the swag basket. Swag basket. For this one, there is this little um, bit on the ground here. You basically want to jump from here no glide and that will land you directly on top of this basket and then you will do a jump extended glide onto this pillar just here <sniffs> my god but yeah you see how that would have landed me there <laughs> when it clicks back into the thing it made me click it <laughs> you didn't see that all right so you're being gonna jump over here that's the other way that you can do it is you can just use those pillars there all right and then here we're just cutting off any little angles that we can and try not to go above um, that bilby thing there. This one, it is technically possible to do like a thing where you like jump and do like a bite into this corner, but it is also possible to soft lock. Um, this is something that you can do as like a last ditch backup, <laughs> as a last ditch backup. But I wouldn't rec wouldn't really recommend spending your time learning that. All right. So now we're gonna head down here. Coming to the right after getting that um, fifth bilby, and then I'm aiming over towards over towards this here. And basically, once I go over this little angle here or whatever, I'm then going to turn to the left so that I get around this piece of wood, and then basically as I get down towards this like little, well, I'll get a bit closer here. As I get down towards the corner properly, you'll see just there, as I get down here, so I'm going to come down like that, and then I'm going to pull a turn to the side, and it's going to let me walk along the side of the terrain here. If you turn too sharply, like this, it will actually bonk you out to the side and launch you out this way. If you turn too shallow, it will also launch you out this way. So you need to get the angle just right. Um, some players, like Karma, like to use keyboard and mouse for this. Um, sorry, like to use just their keyboard for this. I prefer to have a little bit more control using my mouse for the entire motion, but you do you. Um, if you accidentally end up falling down here and you're sliding down this area, you'll fall down into this area over here. This loses about five or six seconds. All right, so this is the proper way to do it. 
So that little flicker on there, that's what you want to go for. All right. Then we are jumping up this section. And then I will give you a few options here. If you were a new runner, I would highly recommend that you go up the right side and hit the dunny over there. This is a backup for mill skip. Okay. Um, for more advanced runners that are confident in their mill skips, okay, you can jump across this area. And for that, basically, once you get to the top of these stairs, you just want to get an extended glide. And what you're aiming to do, this is somewhat similar to slide one skip on Walk in the Park, but essentially you want to get as much height as you can, and then you want to go down and then kind of use whatever speed and pressure you have to then turn out to the rise a little bit to try and get you up like to try and get you across so i'll just draw on this here so you're going to try and get as much height as you can this way and then when you land you're facing down with the slope and then you're going to try and rotate out towards the right just like that that'll save you about two or three seconds all right now this is where your two options come in so there is two version, three or four versions of mill skip, something like that. Um, the fastest one is doing this. That's the fastest one that we typically do. Um, we occasionally do like an extra little flick out, um, but I'll show you all of the stuff that I recommend here. Doing it without a bite is quite a bit more difficult. Um, However, it doesn't have really any risk of doing a fall of shame. A fall of shame is when you fall down that mountain there and you need to run all the way back up or die to those frills over there to use the respawn point over there. That's also why I was recommending for new runners that you come over here so that if you do fall down the mountain, okay, if you do fall down the mountain, you're then able to you die and then take that dunny. Just keep in mind, if you're running on hardcore, you can't use that strategy. Okay, just keep that in mind. All right, which I am on hardcore, so I won't actually be able to show you. All right. So for the stand, like for the easier way of doing new mill skip, um, the most important thing. Well, there's a few of them, but one of the most important things is that you get a decent extended glide. You get that little extra burst of height off of the top of your extended glide there. That extra 20 units of speed that you get from when you time it well. If you do it too late, you can get what we call a down glide, where you don't actually get any boost upwards. Okay, if you do that, you're guaranteed to fail it, basically. Um, so to get this, basically you need to get your extended glide, and the easy way is extended glide into bite. Now, the way that this is going to work is you are going to extended glide, you need to get around this little post here. Let me just turn a little bit to the side there so we get better vision. All right. So you need to jump kind of like around here-ish. You'll get wedged by the like edge here and by this wall. This thing is like slightly raised or whatever. So it actually gives you a little bit of a wedge. So when you get in here, you'll notice that like tie slows down and then you want to jump turning out to the side and then immediately go for your turn back in once you've gotten around this post. So you're going to jump going around that and then you do your extended glide and then you do a bite facing into this corner at kind of like 30, 45 degrees, that kind of thing. That's what you're aiming for there. So you'll see here, I go right into that little wedge there. I kind of went over the top of it a little bit, but into this wedge here. Okay. And then I'll do it with the bice as well. And then what I want to do is I want to set my camera behind okay, behind this area here, and then I want to hold S, okay, because what happens is from that bite, if you don't do any other inputs, Ty will actually slide out, so you actually need to run into the thing, so I'm holding S, Ty will immediately run back into the skip, and then you basically just need to try and match this angle, you basically need to be anything within this angle range here, that kind of thing. That should get you fine. Yeah, you can see all of those angles there are just fine. Okay, and then once you're here, you've set your camera here, you'll then do jump and then W. If you do W and then jump, you may end up losing it. However, Ty does take a moment to turn around, so you can still get it. It's just a lot more prone to failure. Um, also, make sure that when you are doing this, 
that you definitively have gotten the extended glide before you go for your bite. If you don't have your extended glide, you will just go falling down that mountain. Okay, so make sure that you have your extended glide down. You also need your extended glide to do the no bite version as well. All right, now it is also perfectly fine to have your camera facing in this way and then um, do like jump and S. However, I find that the camera is a little bit annoying a little bit more annoying to manage that way. So I prefer to go like this. All right, now you've seen me doing all of these like little extra jumps across here instead of using the button. That requires a somewhat tight extended glide. So what I would recommend for most new runners is that they jump onto this area here, which is pretty simple. You just line up with this area and then you jump onto that and then use your scope, shoot the button. You don't have to use your scope. You can turn it down like that and then You've got two options of difficulty here. The harder way is to just jump on here and then go over to this piston and then use it to get up to the top there where the thunder egg is. Or the other option, this is what um, I teach runners that are really not confident with any fine movement. Um, I also got my mum to do mill skip using this method. So you aim towards the like pointy part on the fence here. Um, let me just draw on that. You want to aim towards that part in your scope after walking yourself using your walking mode. Okay. This is like the hitbox for the fence or whatever. You want to walk yourself right into this corner with your walking mode here. Okay. You can see when I'm on my walking mode, it's not going to let me fall off. Okay. It does let you fall off, fall off in other areas, but not here. So I walked into that corner and now I'm aiming at that little corner on the gate and then I'm going to jump and then right click at the top of my jump and then hold scope again. So I'm holding scope again and there we go. You see it puts me pretty much perfectly on top of the fence there. Okay, alternatively, instead of holding scope for when you finish doing your bite, the other alternative is that you can simply just run, run forward. That will also do it just fine. That is essentially all of the setups on new mill there. I will just also address how to do old mill um, and then I'll show you where to go after words as well. If you're doing old mill, you want to pick up this thunder egg first, um, but this is old mill here. Also, if you recall, as I mentioned before, it gets higher the closer you are to the edge here, okay? So the way that we time this is we go over that little bit of higher terrain and then that lets us get around. The reason why this one is harder for most people is it is easier for people to manage getting an extended glide than it is for them to get an extended glide and also flicking their camera around okay um you'll see a lot of people like trying to do their mill skips and stuff at all sorts of like little angles and stuff like that there but genuinely doing it the other side once you have gotten your extended glides down is a lot easier for most runners so I would not really recommend learning this one anymore but this is the one that we used to use before new mill this old one is about five seconds slower as well and doing bussinless only saves about a second um, there is also another option for really advanced runners um, karma and i don't do this in more record runs currently even but we can also do a thing called 360 mil there the thing is for every attempt that you fail it loses about a second and for every attempt that you get it saves about a second something like that and we only have around a 50% success rate and we're not going to gamble on a high pace run for one second. Because, you know, when we're when we're on a good run pace at Millskip, generally, you know, that, that could be a few hours work in some cases to get a to get a good run here. So we're not going to gamble it on something that small. Typically, we would rather put it into like 80, 90 percent success rate skips for one second. So anyways, once you have gotten the Thunder Egg up here. What you will do is you'll then do a bite off of here and you can try and time it nicely as well you can land a little bit before the thunder egg so that these blue tongues can punch you ideally um one of the ones more on the side there will punch you and it will push you towards these mushrooms that does save a little bit of time however in this context um they have moved around a little bit because i was standing around the area for a long time anyways that is snow worries from there, you return the koalas. Make sure you return the koalas. If you exit level before returning the koalas, then you need to collect all of the koalas down the mountain again, and that is a reset, basically. 
So yeah, that is Snow Wise. Next level is going to be Outback Safari. For that one, you want to turn around, jump, and then go into the portal here. So I'll see you in a moment. All right. So for Snow Worries, any direction that you move off of the starting platform is going to start off the mission. So I'll just main menu into this here. So I'm just hold holding W here, and then I'm turning my camera 90 degrees to the right. Maybe 100 degrees so that I turn back down this way. And you can see that's where the house starts there. And essentially, the map isn't too helpful on this one. Essentially, we're going to run down here, and then we get the koala. And then there's going to be another koala in that little snow pile just there and another one just over there, and then another one just over there. Any snow piles that have kangaroos around them, any snow piles that have kangaroos around them will have a koala inside. Um, you need to be careful of these dudes because they are absolute snipers. Sometimes you can jump to avoid their snowballs and stuff, but they actually have insane accuracy sometimes. Um, if a snowball hits you, it loses about a second. You can see that I can't move or do anything during that, maybe even two seconds. They're pretty brutal. Um, so you get four, you get four koalas before the starting section. Um, make sure that when you're shooting these snow piles as well, um, sometimes if you shoot like right at the base or near the center of them or anything like that, you can actually shoot the koala on the inside of the snow pile instead of the snow pile. So I would typically recommend aiming towards kind of like the top part of the snow pile instead. So just be aware of that. Now, the next thing to go over is ice movement. So we've just gotten that koala there. I then like to turn here and then go on the left side of this tree. Basically, we're just looking to get on the ice as soon as possible because you actually move faster when you're on the ice. Now, when we do this at proper pace, there's actually going to be a wallaby snowboarding down the mountain that will kind of be a little bit awkward, but you should be able to outpace him if you do everything smoothly. So I'll just show you that whole section again. Also keep in mind as well, jumping on any slopes is always going to be slightly faster. This level has a lot of slopes everywhere, so anywhere that it's not affecting your lines or getting in the way of you doing any bite boosts or anything, you want to be jumping. Alright, so there's that wallaby that I was talking about. Quite often you'll need to kill him. That's kind of what you're looking for on your snow lines there. So I'll just go up and show you that, just again with the snow lines because they're a little bit weird. Um, also, once you touch ice for the first time in a level <coughs> as well, you'll actually um, get put down to zero speed because the ice is being loaded in for the first time. But when you get on here, basically what you're looking to do is you run on and then you want to run down and like down with the hill as fast as you can. You want to turn tie facing down that direction to build your speed as soon as possible. Once you've built your speed, then you can start think about thinking about your lines running off to the side and such to try and get to where you need to go. So I'm going to turn down immediately first and now I'm like pushing myself over towards the left, doing a little jump to extend my movement across here and then I get this koala here. Now instead of going all the way down here, doing all of that extra running, I'm going to come up here on this closest bit of ice here, I'm going to make contact with the ice and then I'm going to immediately go down, get all of that speed, turn and pressure my way across here. You could also do a little bit of a spam like a little spam on your jumps or whatever to try and cancel your momentum out to let you get even tighter across that area like this. That's another option as well. Once again, jumping up the hills and just be careful of these frills. You don't actually need to break any of the ice. Um, I do like to break the ice on the way back though because the timings on those jumps and stuff gets pretty awkward. And then just around here, just because of how I'm needing to get around those like corners and such, I'm not always jumping around some of those little bits and pieces there. All right, and then here, um, I like to aim for just a little bit to the side here. And then I am going to take a jump just here up to get on top of here. I need to get a good extended glide and then I can jump back over towards the koala. That allows me to do it no, um, no ledge grab or anything like that. We used to do it from up here, however that required a ledge grab um, and also required you to go further over to the right. This one has a little bit of doubled up movement, but so does this one. So the left one is actually faster because you're removing an extended glide. Uh, sorry, removing a ledge grab. Thank you, Tinsel. And then doing ledge bites off those as well. And basically the moment that you land slash go past the koala for that one, you can get a nice little, um, what do you call it? 
you can get a nice little slide bite off of that. Doesn't always work though. Um, for this one, I like to be cycled onto my right boomerang, just so that I know exactly which boomerang is going to come out of my hand. Occasionally some weird aggro stuff will happen to make you miss the second one though. And that's how you want to manage all of your bite boosts between all of those sections. Once again, remembering to do all of your jumps along all of the slope terrain. Of course, lines come before anything. All right. And then here, I'm looking to make contact with the ice around this point here. And then I'm going to go down slightly and then use that to use that speed to help carry me across. And then here, I'm going for a bit of height. And now I'm converting that into speed. Did that a little bit too soon, but there we go. And then here, using my height and just getting an extended glide across there. And I'm just trying to get into the water as soon as I can there. So I'll just go over that section one more time. So you're just following down this section. Instead of being over here, you kind of want to be a little bit more over towards the side there and then run straight down and then get an extended glide there. And then you're aiming to get in the water as soon as you possibly can which is going to be around there. All right, and then from here, on keyboard and mouse, you're wanting to go full, like, swim down, um, full swim down angle. So you want to swim down, and then basically, the moment that you get the cutscene for Yabby, you're going to, like, flick the mouse around, and you're going to throw boomerangs at it. So like this. All right, and then ideally, you want to have Yabby um, walk into that little vent there. However, alternatively, you can put Yabby into the wall there. If you're not comfortable pushing Yabby consistently up against the wall, you can just push Yabby directly into that cage area over there. The way that Yabby works is a little bit funny. Yabby will, <coughs> Yabby will go exactly opposite to whatever angle you have just shot Yabby from. So if I shoot Yabby from, if I shoot Yabby from over here, Yabby will go that way. If I shoot Yabby from over here. Yabby will go this way. If I shoot Yabby from here, Yabby will just go perfectly straight. So you need to be aware of that as you're doing any shots. All right, so now Yabby is aggroed, and then I'm just going to swim out wide a little bit so that Yabby can get around the vent. And then I'm going to turn around, shoot from the right side, shoot the first three of them, and then pretty much like half a second once Yabby is visible coming around that corner, that's when you can then shoot the final one. All right, now for lawn swim, Okay, for Lawn Swim, <laughs> this one is named after me. We also call it the worst trick in the game because it's like 5% success rate and we don't really understand it currently. Um, it saves 8 seconds, but essentially all of the concepts to get it um, is you want to come out parallel with, um, with like this area just here. Let me just reset my air here. Would have been funny if I got it. But essentially you want to come out parallel, parallel with that thing there. Um, and I like to aim kind of like just around here, that kind of thing. And like, I'm paying attention to the trees, sorry. So not so much aiming there. I like to come out just around this area here with like a slight, slight curve in with my camera ultimately facing up towards this point here as I'm like right near that area there. That's kind of what I like to go for. Um, Ironically, a lawn swim has never been in a world record. So I'll try and go for a few of them here, but no promises. All right, if I don't get it in the next two, I'll just need to cut until I get, do get it. One more. But yeah, as I said, it's around 5% success rate. It, it's rough. All right, I'll cut there. All right, Outback Safari. Arguably one of the hardest levels in the game. Um, this is where you're going to need your controller a lot. So essentially, if you remember, um, in the earlier section of the video, I showed you how to bind your movement onto your D-pad here. This just makes your Outback movement quite a bit easier instead of using your joystick. Um, you will need to have your controller and your keyboard and mouse set up. 
to do all of this movement. So I'll just give you an idea of what this all looks like when you were doing it here. Um, I'll need to move the mic a little bit to the side there so that you can see things properly. All right, I think that's pretty good. All right, so we're gonna jump into Outback Safari here. And essentially what I'm doing is instead of having my controller facing directly into my keyboard and mouse, um, for me, I've got like a little plug in the front that gets quite annoying if I have my controller facing straight. So I like to rotate my controller like 45 to 90 degrees almost, that kind of thing. So I put my thumb on D-pad up and then I put my fourth and uh, fourth and second finger, I put them onto A and D and I'll be dancing between the two of them. So this is what your movement should look like. So right now I'm only pressing A and then if I want to transition my camera, I go to D. Now what you'll notice is I need to keep my camera pointing at 45 degrees at all times, basically. So whenever I want to do a change in like my camera direction, I need to swap between A and D and then also flick my camera to be on the other 45 degree angle, which will be a 90 degree change all up. So this is the way that I'm managing my movement there. Okay, this is how fast normal Outback movement looks. Okay, and then this is Outback speed. Okay, so essentially what is happening is you get, you know, straight movement plus side movement or whatever, and then those two get added together to give you a diagonal movement, which is the square root of two, which is 41% faster. So that is what Outback movement is, and overall it saves you about a minute. Now, the reason why it saves so much time is because like you really gain a lot of like um, movement pressure during the Shazza section of the level. And you're able to save around, I believe it's around 40 to 45 seconds on Shazza alone. And then you can save around 20 seconds on the rest of the level, and then you save around 5 seconds on Emus. So that is kind of like how the... Like, the distribution between all of the different areas that save time using Outback movement, okay? So Shazza is the most important part, followed by just general movement, followed by emus. So I would actually recommend for anyone that is starting to implement Outback movement that you don't bother with it on emus until you're until you're pretty comfortable with Outback movement generally. Because emus, you've, there's a lot going on. Um, I would recommend that you just focus on the general mechanics of emus. So... Starting things off with the route, let's jump into the level fresh here. Also, actually one really important thing, when you are loading into the level, make sure that you are not spamming anything, okay? Outback is particularly bad for this, okay? But if you were spamming things on Outback, this is the level that will crash the game the most, okay? I just made it crash by spamming things there, okay? So please avoid that, okay? Outback is the level that is the most finic like is, that is the most um, particular with that. So please make sure that you do not spam like your controller buttons or your keyboard and mouse buttons, okay? Really be aware of that. All right. So we're gonna jump in here. All right, wait until all of the pools have filled in, and now I'm going to run immediately to Shazza, okay? And then what this is going to do is it's going to teleport me from here to here, and then I'm going to go, Psh, I'm not doing any moves now, I'll do them later. And then you go and do the Ranger Campfire um, Water Tower missions here. And then after that, we head up north, and then we get a whole bunch of the stuff through here. Main menu, do emus, and then it will teleport us back here, and then we do Shazza. That's kind of the way that the whole route is structured on this level. Um, emu warp is something that I found. One of my larger time saves. Okay, so for this one, you turn around immediately, and then you talk to Ranger Ken. Ken is quite difficult to talk to. Um, just make sure that you're moving your mouse to the left or whatever as you come into the dialogue, and then you're just spamming E. That'll go through everything properly. All right then make sure to watch out for this little outhouse here this little outhouse here because there is a golden cog inside of it um of course that messed up my lines while trying to explain it but there we go going around the thing here i think i had vibration on my controller for some reason and you're looking to kind of like just barely bump into those bilby crates you don't need to do an attack or anything like that to destroy the bilby crates 
on this level. Okay, so just bump into them. All right. Then here, the advanced way is to take a line on the inside of all of this stuff here. However, this is quite risky. So feel free to do whatever you like to get in between stuff there. Um, there is some concepts around whether it would be faster to get this bilby in here during this section. However, um, generally this is going to result in you getting yeeted off into the distance or whatever, quite often ending up falling into a pillar. So I generally wouldn't recommend this. It's very difficult to get a good line into that. So I would just get it during MS. All right, and then for this one, you basically want to aim to come in at this sort of angle here. And then this will hopefully let you kind of get a ricochet off of the bilby there. You can try and do an attack with it. However, the attack can sometimes you lo lose you time if you don't do it well. So there we go. I actually was too far to the left there. So I missed it all together. And if you do an attack, then that'll make it even worse. So get a little ricochet there and then continue on this way. If you do miss it, it'll lose you a few seconds. And then um, Thunder Egg in the waterfall there. And then we're going to walk, walk around this area here. I like to swap to an A movement here, and then ricochet off that bilby. I did that line terribly. <laughs> so A movement here, be a little bit wider, ricochet off that bilby, get out here. And then I like to overturn in here, do an attack um, into the side. So what I mean by the overturn is you're coming in wide here, and then you're coming in at an angle, you're still maintaining speed, then you turn, then you get your attack, and then you spam E into the cutscene there instead of going straight up here with your full speed where you don't have contact with the ground because if you go straight up here see how i'm not able to get into stuff quite as quickly so coming around here overturning a bit and just like that you can spam into it i like to start bottom center and then i go um clockwise from there you need to shoot each of these three times. If the frills repair them, then you need to fix them. And then main menu, and make sure you're not bumping any buttons here. This is where it's most common to mess it up. All right, and I'll actually just cut here for a moment. All right, had to take a good sneeze there, but I'm back. All right, so from here, this goes into emus, the hardest and also most RNG mission in the game. So for emus, what you want to do is you will go forward into Shazza, and then I will explain a few different strategies and just a whole bunch of different concepts of the emus. I'll probably need to do these half a dozen times here. Um, I'll also first do it without, uh, no, I'll first do it without back movement, and then I'll show you some without as I'm explaining stuff. All right, so this is just an emu demonstration here. This is my preferred route on emus. However, going right is completely viable as well. And actually, I do get a left-right start. But this is just about how I'm reading the emus there. That one pulled really badly, but I didn't have a good line into it initially anyways. I'm getting RNG'd out here a little. But I lost a lot of that time just off of my um, throw angle anyways. Damn. All right, so in reality, if that happens at a run, I would have just lost seven or eight seconds there. Most of that was my mistake, though. Emus is an incredibly hard mission. But essentially, what I am doing there is I am going into the mission, and then here, the reason why I went for left route, this is just my preference, but essentially I'm able to pick up these two emus here, which will quite often end up either going way out into that corner there, losing quite a bit of time, or they will end up over here losing quite a bit of time. So I started with these two emus, and then judged that basically the emus over there hadn't run down there, so they would have been bunching up that way, and then I decided to go right there. Unfortunately, one of them did decide to loop back around to here, which is a bit unlucky, but comparing that to one of them running all the way back here, or all the way back there, that's not the end of the world. So. In terms of general mechanics of picking up the emus and where the different emus can end up, these two emus, they can end up all the way back pretty much out to this bit of road here. This is the furthest that they can end up. 
and then the two emus that spawn on the right there these ones can spawn as far back as here so they can walk as far back as here however they can also walk as far forward up as here this is what you're banking for when you do left left side start is for these right side emus to walk their way up here and then for you to be able to get a quick um, follow through and get a whole bunch of emus lined up through here um, setting you up for like basically 930 um, but right side as well you can also get emus that you know you can get these ones with some really good dives initially and then these ones can also walk all the way up to like here and then you can get a whole bunch of emus lined up here so both routes end up being quite similar all things considered it's a matter of personal preference all right so general mechanics of emus um what you're looking for is you're looking to throw your lasso lasso when you're a okay distance away you also need to be aware of like how fast you're moving because when you're moving forward okay look at where the boomerang is going to land the position of where the boomerang is going to land is attached to the ball so you see as i rotate the position of where that thing is landing is changing drastically that is ultimately what determines what is going to be hooking onto the emu so you can see if i turn like that if i position it over that emu you see how it then hooks down onto it okay now if the emu is really far like that you can do an intentional break so i'm trying to trace out the direction of where that emu is and is going with where my lasso is pointing okay so you see how i flicked out to the right there and i was able to get it to latch onto that emu once again here okay that time i was i just had a little bit too much forward movement and there i wasn't able to do a charge now to get a charge when you're doing your emu lasso you need to have a little bit of momentum and then you need to get a right click in or a bite or whatever relatively quickly so you see how i lined up that emu with where my boomerang was going to be and for that one my first throw i had too much momentum so my lasso was going past the emu if you go inside of the emu the issue that happens is your lasso is always going to throw past him okay that's why you need to stand a little bit back okay and then when the emu gets close enough or whatever then you see that the emu is able to basically be like well ty is able to be like okay yeah i'm going to target the emu instead of throwing it past the emu that's why you need to stand a little bit back all right so let's try another one here i got a nice little right turn out there this emu is trolling me also all of these objects wow that email was a troll um all of these objects all of these boxes all of these posts all of these pillars okay these can all break or stop you from getting your email okay so be really aware of them and you also can't hook around them as well so let's try another one there <laughs> emus are tough though um top players can kind of average like 920 emus that kind of thing i haven't played in a little while though i've been busy with a lot of things all right um the best emu that has ever been gotten is a 931 i believe by karma crimson my best is like a 929 when we say 929 you look at the time oh my goodness you look at the timer on the top of the screen there We also like to call emus memus. It's just a lot of pain. Um, in reality, there's only about five or ten seconds of RNG. The rest of it is all, is all execution. So a lot of what I've been missing here is just execution. And I got a nice little right turn in there. All right, let's try one more here. But yeah, quite often emus will actually make up about 30 to 40% of your practice overall. That one was unfortunate because I hit the pillar right as I hooked onto the thing. I actually would have preferred to have not hooked the emu there. My goodness. One more time. Emu pain. Emu pain. Didn't see that. I haven't done emus in like a month or two. I'm rusty.
And that was a post break. That was really good patience on that one. There we go. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention as well, kind of out towards the Opal machine, there is one that we call RNG Emu. Basically, an Emu can walk way out that way and lose a lot of time. That was lucky. Alright, so that's not the worst Emu. That would be acceptable in a run, but obviously not ideal because you can still get it like 6 or 7 seconds faster than that. All right, so that is Emus. Now we're going to go into the Shazza Escort mission. For this one, really important that you use Outback Movement here, because um, you save so much time from the increased pressure that you can get with your pushing when you're on Outback Movement. So what you'll notice here is... I actually turn my webcam down to the side again here, so that you can see this. And I'll just go into the mission fresh again. So we've done EMUs, and then we come in here. And then I'm going to be pushing Shazza, and see how I am flicking between A and D. And then if I go past Shazza, I will go onto S with my keyboard to slow me down, to let me get back in behind her. So A and D allows me to stay mostly facing forward. Um, you can get a little bit pre better pressure if you just manage your camera movement perfectly, but doing that is very hard. So you will need to use a little bit of A, a little bit of D, a little bit of S, and camera movement to keep everything in check, really. Now, as long as you're pushing her well, um, you shouldn't need to worry about her HP at all. Um, if she takes more than three or four hits of damage in that early section, though, then you may need to play a bit of Shazza Defender. Now you also want to try and push her tight around corners. So you can see here, I'm pushing her tighter around the corner so that she gets a better line. And then just around here, I'm gonna dip off and get the Thunder Egg here from my fifth Bilby. And then I'm gonna come back here and pushing her once again. It's quite common for her to be left on one or two HP. And then once again, trying to get on the outside of her so that I can push her tight. But sometimes there's like a few areas that she won't accept a super tight line. Ideally you want to be getting your push on Shazza though, like 80-90% of the time at least. And then from here you do an exit level. This Thunder Egg for some reason saves a little bit slower than other ones, so just be aware that you may have a little bit of an awkward time going into your menu there. Alright, so I'll do that one more time here just so that you can get a good look at how I'm managing all of that right from the beginning. So I get around and behind Shazza, and now I'm just pushing her, looking to maintain my camera angles in a way that I can get nice long pushes here. Using my S to get behind her as I need. And eventually you'll kind of learn where Shazza's like different routes and patterns and stuff are so that you can kind of manipulate things a little bit to your favor. You also want to be careful of this tornado. Just go around it. The tornado is random in terms of its position, so you can lose a second or two having to go around it. So there, I had to do a big S press to try and let her pass me. However, unfortunately, some of the frills got in my way for that. Pushing her in tight again. Making those lines tight. Forgot about her routing with the box there. In tight here. And then the bilby will be there. And then after this, I'll also show you what to do if you do the order, if you do the level in the wrong order. <coughs> well, I may as well explain it now, actually. So if you do um, emus and then Shazza, okay, then you can do a main menu, and then you can do the emu warp, okay. The reason why we do the emu warp first is because it allows us to collect the Bilby Thunder Egg during the Shazza mission, which generally is going to save us um, a few seconds. Because if we got it, like if we did the level in the other order, we would be getting the um, Bilby Thunder Egg. We would be collecting that near the Toxic Waste minigame, and doing it there, you're taking that Thunder Egg animation and you are purely losing time for it. Whereas if you get the Thunder Egg animation during the Shazza pushing, 
then Shazza is still making progress while you're collecting the Thunder Egg, so we consider that to be a little bit more efficient. It's just a little bit of task overlapping, but if you do mess it up, I think it's only like one or two seconds, considering that you do get a little bit more Shazza pushing time if you do the order weirdly. So yeah, um, that is Outback Safari. I'll see you in Bridge Over the Tart. Sorry, Bridge Over the River Tart. Um, simply, you just go main menu. Sorry, not main menu. After you finish Shazza, you do exit level, and then you're holding S, and then you're just spamming, spamming your cutscene button, and then that'll take you into Bridge. And then you'll want to do S and turn around there. But I'll continue with that in a moment. All right. So going into Bridge on the River Tie, I'm going to be doing this one on practice mod because we're going to need to jump in and out of the level a lot. I am going to do a clean run through of the entire level though, just because this one has a lot of cycles and everything like that to keep in mind. So I'll do a main menu. Oh, I'm on the wrong save file. All right. So I'm going to run back immediately. There we go. Make sure that you don't do your bite too soon, otherwise it's quite easy to do a bite into the ground. This is the thank you broad jump. Make sure to do just a single tap on your glide there. Otherwise it's quite easy to mess that one up with flutter glide for some reason. You saw that guy tossing his cricket ball in the air there. That means that he was about to shoot. So you always want to be shooting that guy as you come around that corner there. He won't always be there and he won't always shoot you, but it's a good habit to be in. All right. And then W and D as I come out to the side there. And then nice big D press to go into my reverse bridge. Shooting up at that basket if you can. Keep on getting bad RNG on that spider. This is just a slightly more optimal line for top players. There we go. Alright, so angle abuse here. I'm going to the side and like basically putting the enemy almost off screen. Pretty awkward, but I got that to work. For this one, you need to bite the Bilby Crate really far back so that you don't hit the lizard there by accident. If you do get into the lizard's range, you'll easily lose a few seconds there trying to bite the lizard instead of the box. All right, and then W and A here, and then I swap to A to get a slightly better angle for my dive. Angle abuse here. And there we go. It's important to shoot these like second and third ones facing backwards. I don't think that one matters so much, but these last ones, you can basically just leave them. If you don't shoot those other ones backwards, it is possible for them to expire. So I definitely do recommend that you do some look back shoots on a few of those. <laughs> All right. That's only really an issue when you start to get onto good paces because you can get too far ahead of Dennis otherwise. So you need to do that to compensate. All right. Just a little scope turn to turn around. Um, one funny thing on scope turns is if you don't hold the scope long enough, it won't actually turn you around. Now, the whole reason why I have to do this as a single sequence is basically what is happening right now is Dennis is walking his way over this bridge right now, and he is going to get just to the very end here, and he's actually going to be like in his little like, oh, I'm home, that kind of thing, animation, right as I am entering the arena here with, Net, uh, with Nettie. And because I am on... Um, because I am on mid-draw distance, Dennis stops being loaded basically once I'm halfway into the arena here, that kind of thing, and I will be able to do the Nettie fight, and then I will walk out of the Nettie fight area, and then Nettie will continue being like, you know, he's like, oh, I've been defeated or whatever, and then he'll give you the cutscene for the Thunder Egg, and then Dennis will also give you his cutscene for the Thunder Egg as well, over top of the other Thunder Egg. So you get two Thunder Egg animations at the same time, saving like three seconds, and then you also don't have a Thunder Egg animation in the middle of the Navy fight, making things quite a bit smoother. So that's kind of what's happening there. That's why I have to do this all in one sequence. Aiming to this little shape on the wall there. Oof. Hopefully that didn't cost it. Doesn't seem to have. Make sure that you're like within like five or ten degrees of being behind Nettie, otherwise it's quite easy for him to to fail on you. But that's one Thunder Egg, and then there's my other Thunder Egg, and you see I only got one animation there. 
So I'll just finish off the rest of the level so that you can see it all, and then I'll go through all of the bits piece by piece. There's my fifth thunder egg. And then we finish the level off at double turkeys. And there's a few backups for this as well. I like to aim for this, um, for this little thing here. I jump right on the edge of that. I don't do any glides, and then I do a dive. This tends to give me a nice little boost here. Didn't really get it that time though. Okay, and then make sure that you're taking direct lines. You're jumping over this like slopey part of the tree. That'll give you more time to approach the turkey. And then there you go. That's where you would then exit level. And then of course you would split and then you would head into Crikey's Cove. However, I've done this one on, on a new save file. So let's jump back in there and then I'll also show you a funny thing with practice mod as well. So in practice mod, if you jump up at the spawn area, we actually have like a little sky hub area that has all of the levels available for you. Um, we do also have the cheat codes and stuff listed that have the level select cheat, etc. Those work in the vanilla game. But anyways, so all of these different sections here. Okay, um, turkeys, if you need to practice your turkeys, you can come here. And this gives you plenty of time to practice that. Now, there's a few other things that you need to get with your turkeys as well. Um, I'm not doing this in particularly the most logical order, but whatever. Um, sometimes that cricket bat guy can be standing almost in front of the turkey. So you may want to like be throwing your boomerangs at them to kind of stun them or even kill them. Anyway, so let's jump in here and let's do the level a bit more chronologically here. So this one, W and A as you kind of come up around here to get you into that area. That's one thing that you want to watch out for. And then for this section, this is reverse bridge. This only saves like one to three seconds. Don't really go for this um, if you're not under like 33, 34 minutes really. Um, you want to do W and D to let yourself come out nice and wide here. And then as you kind of like approach this little wedge in the ground, uh, sorry, wedge in the wall, you're basically then going to jump from here. Don't do any glide. You're going to jump up here and then you're going to do a nice big D press to put yourself this way. Okay. Nice big D press, okay? And then once you have gone up, you'll gain quite a bit of height and then you'll do an A press out this way. And this should pretty much just put you up with those single two presses. Um, you may need to add another D press in there, but that's pretty much all there is to getting up. So D and then A, okay? And in terms of the tempo that you want to do, it wants to be like D, A, D, A, D, A, D, A, that kind of thing, like almost half a second to them, maybe a third of a second. So you see how that big D press gets me over this invisible wall and gets me a lot of height. Now, the next thing to consider is then how to do the jump across here. Um, you kind of want to take it from like this little corner bit there, this little bit just here, because this is kind of like a far forward point and then it's also like highest or whatever. Because if I turn my thing this way or whatever, it's not the highest, but it's like a mixture of far forward and also fairly high. So that's where I like to jump from. And then what you're aiming for, not quite to do that, what you're aiming for, there's kind of two ways that you can approach this and it also is something that you can react to on the fly. But essentially, if you want to play conservatively, you want to aim to come in at a slight angle and think like you're going to ledge grab onto here. However, if you get a really good extended glide, you can kind of like angle it a little bit more to the right and you can try and get actually on top of this area here and do it grabless. Doing it grabless is what makes it like three seconds. If you do get grabbed, then it's only like one second, that kind of thing. Um, keep in mind as well, quite often when you're learning it for the first time, you'll be like, oh, I'm up here. And then you keep on running and then you do a big turnaround and you've literally wasted all of the time that you could have saved, you know? So be aware of that. Um, when you do get it, you need to be relatively quick with how you're getting a turnaround. Um, it's also important that you get flutter glides in with a near frame perfect extended glide to get this one. Okay. It is not easy to get. Um, so I'll do that here. And then also keep in mind that you also want to shoot that basket just there. Okay. Cause then shooting that basket, you'll be able to come in here, get the bilby. And then just here, you can go for another little extended glide. I kind of did my little jump a little bit too soon there. And then I also did a glide to try and do that one. So it was a bit harder than usual, but essentially you'll then get your extended glide onto here. You'll land on this bit of rock and you'll slide down. That saves like an extra half second, something like that. 
and is applicable to both routes. All right, so into the Dennis section, let's talk a little bit more about angle abuse here. Okay, so for this one, okay, we've got to be aware of where like all of those different enemies and stuff are. Okay, so basically you, you can see how as I turn towards this guy, see how when I am facing forwards, Ty will just throw forwards, okay? Ty will just throw forwards as I'm facing towards him. But as I go increasingly to the side, Ty will no longer target him. Unless he's maybe like on a slightly different rank cycle or something like that. So you can see now he's not targeting any of them, even though they're right in front of him. Okay. That is essentially what we're exploiting when we do this, is I'm turning to the side so that he still targets onto the thing. And I might even do it to the other side like that, so that he's targeting off to the right side or the left side, anything like that. So here... You know, these dudes were right in front of me. If I was trying to shoot straight like that, no shot, you know? This will just target all of the other guys. But if I just shoot off sideways, then I can get that shot, no problem. I can get above them, I can do all of that, no problem. You can also do, like, vertical um, vertical angle abuse as well, like that, to try and shoot over them. And then similar things on these ones as well. For this one, quite often, I like to shoot a little bit to the side here. And you see how, when I'm in line with this torch, just by shooting off to the side there, I'm able to hit that hit that torch or whatever. And even if the things were directly in my way, I'm still able to shoot it. Okay, that's why like that can actually sometimes save you time. Um, ideally, like you'd be able to get like an angle abuse here or whatever, something like that, and then you can dive directly into the water. But there's less than half a second in it. All right. Next up, we've got the Bilby Crate here. For this one, you basically just want to bite it from far away. Because if you see here, okay, right now, Ty is targeted onto that dude, okay? <coughs> Instead, I want him to be closer to the thing here. So that, well, sorry, obviously, ideally, you want him to be far away from the thing. But what you can do to work around how far away he is, come on, come on. Something tells me I won't get him any closer. But what you can do to work around it is basically Ty has a distance that he is going to target onto them, etc. So what you can do is just bite from further away and you can avoid targeting him. And then here for this section as well, this one you need to do a bit of angle abuse to avoid that box. And then here you can do angle abuse to the right as you walk past him to get that torch. And then here, this is one of the awkward ones. If the cricket is like directly in front of it, you may need to stop and do a scope here. This is like the one that can be the most unlucky. Um, but typically you will be able to get away with an angle abuse here. Even if the cricket is like over here running in the way, you'll still be able to get away with it a lot of the time. Like that one probably only gets you like 5% of the time. All right. So you get your jump then in this way. Basically, you just want to avoid hitting that tree. And then you want to swim over to this little bush here. Um, even a little bit left of that. And then you're basically running up using like W and A and then doing an angle abuse shot back on that so that you don't target onto that dude, which can sometimes even be standing literally right there. So it's one of the tougher ones to angle abuse consistently. And then for this one, basically your goal is to turn as tight as you can. Well, not as tight as you can, but you want to turn as early as you can so that you can make this a straight line across there. That is your goal to get the best line. Um, it's a little bit awkward because sometimes like the angle abuses on that one and the range and everything is quite tough. And then you also need to be managing all of your back shooting here. So it's quite easy to lose a second or so across this section, especially with like all of your flicks and changing direction and stuff like that there. And then for this, there's like a little, little height change on the ground here or whatever. For this one, basically you just jump there, you land on this thing here, and then you get a ledge bite off that. Fairly substantial ledge bite. And then for this one or whatever, there's like, you get an opal and then you just shoot off slightly to the side of it and then you can get that one. You should probably be cycled onto your right boomerang as well. Then you get a ledge bite down this section. Watching out for the bat. You can shoot the bat. Your flame ring will kill it in a single shot. Um, your standard boomerangs will require two shots. But anyways, so you want to come down this way. Um, if the bat is in the way, make sure, for one, whenever you do this dive, only press your dive once, because if you press it more than once, you can end up comboing into all of these boxes, and you can also combo onto that um, cricket bat guy. 
So only ever press your bite once. And if you see Ty looking to the side or anything like that, I would just recommend that you simply let yourself hit the water and then do that. You can still get your double thunder egg. Um, hitting the bat loses quite a bit of time, like biting the bat. And then you come into here, you do a quick double tap, and then you go like W jump into your thing here scope turn and then i'm holding w to get me moving immediately and then i'm spamming with my space bar um it's more ideal in my opinion to swim by holding w or whatever and then spamming with your space bar um i'm not sure if it saves any time but if you see here if i'm like spamming my space bar like this you see how i don't actually maintain any speed there so by holding your w or whatever you guarantee that you won't actually ever be losing speed in those situations or whatever so that's why I prefer to swim like that instead of doing full spam the whole way. All right. So after you get the thunder egg here, you'll dive in here immediately. And then you're looking for this little diagonal um, like crease in the wall or whatever. So there's kind of two of them here. <coughs> one of them is here. This is the one that you want to go up. This is going to be the area that you can actually walk up here. And then it'll let you walk to around this height. And it will also let you walk to the side. Now from here, you can do um, what we call a 360, which then lets you basically jump. Like, it lets you do like a little jump and just go out and around like that. That's one way that you can do it. The other option is to come to the side, walk over here, and then just simply do a... I'm not sure if you even need an extended glide, but you can just jump and glide facing straight into the wall. So you swim up here. Let's see. Can you do it from here? So you do need to be holding forward. Okay, so if you come off of W as you're doing that, you can see that I am able to get up just with an extended glide there. Let's see, can I do this one without? Okay, you don't even need to glide for that one. But essentially here is like, I'm walking up slightly and then I go like that. And the little turnaround thing that I'm doing, that's just to make sure that, because essentially you see how this is an overhang? If I'm walking forward into that, it's eating my height, okay? You're basically like bonking your head on the ceiling, stopping yourself from going up. So by coming off of W, or by like adding like a little 360 turnaround, you're able to get rid of it eating your height. That's kind of what you can do there. The alternatives as well is you could also run into it kind of sideways like this, and then do like a little jump and turn in like that. That's one alternative that some new runners prefer. What I would recommend is you just simply come over to the side here, where the jump is easier. And for that one, you can just hold W the whole time and just add your extended glide because this section of the wall is a little bit flatter. It's not as overhangy, so you can see there. It's not eating as much as when you're on this section. So holding W isn't as punishing when you're on the side here. All right, so coming into the netty fight here. Um, okay, cool, he's fresh. So for this one, it varies a little bit, but if you are not doing the... Um, if you're not doing the double TE strat, you want to do something called like, I would call it like mini charge strat or whatever, or medium charge strat. You're basically aiming to have him in this like somewhat closer area here. So basically I'll stand in the front here and then let him get a little bit of a charge and that'll put him closer to the exit. And then see how I'm basically just getting behind him and then shooting and then I try and run out of the arena, okay? Um, people used to bite into Nettie's body to get a Thunder Egg anim animation cancel. However, I found out that that was actually about like one second slower, so we don't do that anymore. Um, you can you can practice your Nettie fight plenty of times here. Um, Nettie is the unmarked one here. <coughs> Unfortunately, I couldn't get a mini Nettie into the spawn area. So this is the standard way of getting Nettie. Basically, you want to be like 10 or 15 degrees um, well, within 10 or 15 degrees behind him. That's kind of what you're aiming for there. And then I'll also just show the um, the double TE strat again as well. For the double TE strat, pretty simple. You just run directly behind him, jump over him immediately. And he does get like the tiniest little charge there. <laughs> really bad angle from me. But yeah. That is essentially what you do for Nettie. And then from here, you go, you get that Bilby, and then you go across to the turkeys. I already got that Bilby in the other one before, so I don't care about it. For now, I get jump across here. You get that little bite boost sometimes. Sorry, that little like landing boost. Goodness. For this one, 
you can actually just walk straight into it and then don't do any other inputs and just go for an extended glide and that'll get you up. Okay, that is the simple way of doing it. You don't need to do any 360 or anything like that. However, we do like to do a 360 just because it gives us the ability to jump just a smidge sooner. Like, when I'm saying a smidge sooner, I'm saying like 0.1 of a second sooner at most, okay? So just walk into it and then get an extended glide, you'll be good, okay? Um, for turkeys, basically you're aiming to come across here. I know I did kind of explain them a little bit before, but I want to go into a bit more depth. Um, you want to run across here and you're basically aiming to bite this turkey kind of around this piece of ground here and let the turkey run into you. From there, you'll then turn directly towards the other turkey. Don't run around this part of the tree because the thing is, when you bite this first turkey, you're on a five second timer. Okay, so you're on a five second timer. You want to beeline it right there. And if you need to go around, if you need to go around that um, cricket guy in any capacity, if you didn't take a direct line between um, between the turkeys, you will not have time to make any adjustments in any way. Because typically you bite the turkey at like 4.5 seconds if you take the perfect line. If you don't take the perfect line, it's like 4.9 seconds. Okay, so really important that you get that direct line and you're jumping over the tree roots. Okay, jump over the tree roots. All right, now I'll go over a few turkey backups here because turkeys are an important one to have backups for. Um, a lot of new runners struggle on these. Also, remember, always bite into the, like, bite in toward, bite into where the turkey's head is pointing, okay? You want to bite, like, one head ahead of the head of the turkey. <laughs> a lot of heads in that sentence, but whatever. Bite one head in front of the turkey's head. Okay? So... Let's say that I miss the second turkey here, okay? I go like this. Oh no, he went to the side here. Okay, this dude is probably gonna walk back here. Yep, so you see he does this right right loop here. Okay, he's gonna walk back into the same area here. So while he's doing that, it would have been better for me to turn around <coughs> and then get this turkey to also walk over and do the same thing. Because now this turkey is gonna place itself pretty much right next to the other one and I'll be able to bite both of them in the same bite or they'll be very close to each other. So I can just go like that, and there we go. That's both turkeys. That's one backup. If you miss the first turkey, actually no, there's still another second turkey backup I need to get. If the turkey goes to the right, okay, well, you can see he's doing that same one again. I may as well show this one in full. They can line up directly on top of each other though. So this is the same one here, nice and simple. <coughs> and that one only loses like 5 or 10 seconds. Surely it will give me the other backup to show you. <laughs> okay, let's try approaching from that side. No, no, okay, it really wants me to show you that one backup over and over and over. Okay, well, the other, other backup is you can get this super bite inside of that basket. That'll be guaranteed as long as you have less than 100 opals. Um, then what you want to do is you want to push those turkeys together again. And when those turkeys are together, sometimes you'll run back like that. When those turkeys are together, you can then sit up like this. And you can bite both of them in the same move. There we go. So that's one backup star that you can do. I think that's actually the intended way that you're meant to do it as well, actually. Okay, can I get the other turkey back up? Let's see. No! <laughs> why can't I get why can't I get the other back up? It's not giving me the chance. My god, dude. <laughs> I actually can't believe that it's not giving me the right side fail. I cannot believe this. The right side fail is actually the way that I usually back it up, ironically. 
Oh my god, dude. Okay, I'll try approaching from the far right side here. <laughs> but if I don't get it this one, I will just explain what, what you're meant to do with a right side fail. Okay, far right side. Okay, there we go. So this turkey is now running up this way. And basically, I'm going to break these boxes here. And then the turkey is going to do a little U-turn. Like that. And then I bite him near the tree. And then I come in here. And then I get the other bite there. So that's the other turkey backup that you can do. Um, and then... Oop, wrong one. Oh, well. I can't do it on the save. It works. So I come in here. Let's say that I missed the first one here. Okay. I can also do a thing where I kind of go like this. And now that turkey has run across there. Hopefully that'll be in time. No, he ran the wrong way. But now this dude, he's going to come back across here. And it's going to be a fairly similar setup to all of those other ones. There we go. So those are kind of like your general concepts behind turkey backups. Anyways, once you get that thunder egg, you simply exit level. And let's just make sure that I got everything. All right, I'll finish these off and then I'll see you in Crikey's Cove. But it will be an exit level here. All right. Now, to go into Crikey, you're going to do A, and then you're going to do like an extended glide and then start spamming your skip cutscene button to put you directly into the portal. Um, ironically, I went directly into bridge there. Ooh, did a main menu. So this is what it's going to be like here. Don't do any camera moves or anything like that. And then you'll see that that will put you into this teleporter here. Now, because I already loaded the level, I need to go through the portal the normal way, but that won't be the case in a speedrun. Now for Crikey, what you want to do is you want to jump in the water as soon as you can. And then once you get over that little bit of netting, you then shoot the pipe, uh, sorry, shoot the air tank. Then you turn around. And now basically I'm trying to make sure that Crikey is doing his loops in a way that leads him back towards the tank there. It's a little bit finicky, but that's kind of how you want to manage that. After he has taken the first hit, you then want to go in the water and shoot the third tank so that it will be up in time. And then you come back over to the second tank here. There we go. And then these are just the positions that I like to set up to have good vision and everything like that. And there we go. That is how you do Crikey. Um, there is a few other methods that you can do. So I'll just show you the other method and I'll also explain some of the Crikey RNG that can happen. So Crikey can sometimes be just diving in the water in that far corner there. So in that case, depending on what he's doing, you may want to come to this tank first and then you may want to come up like this. The other thing that can happen as well is see how Crikey then has kind of like lost all aggro. And then once that other tank is up, then he will do a re-aggro and go up to the thing there. If he doesn't bite you, then it means that he will stay aggroed on you, but won't be able to path to you, and he'll just continue swimming in whatever direction you led him, basically. So you need to decide on kind of like whatever direction Crikey is moving or whatever, depend like to figure out exactly which is best. But most people just default to going going down the right. So doing that other tank order can be a little bit complicated sometimes. But you can see how this one is leading him a little bit closer to the thing sometimes. That's one option that you can do there. Um, typically, uh, typically though, out of simplicity, I would just recommend that you do what everyone else does, and that is simply going and doing right side only. It's only really for when Crikey gets stuck in that in that far corner that that other strategy can be viable. Um, it's also good to like swim out nice and wide here, so that then you can bring Crikey in, and then you see how he turns to the right there, and that puts him directly into the into the tank there. So that can save you about a second. So that's a bit more of an advanced strategy, but we take those. We take those. That is going to be pretty much everything for Crikey there. And there we go. And I will take a cut there, because now we have the most important skips in the game, pretty much. We have Gate Skip, we have Cast Skip, and we have Doom Skip all coming up, so see you in a moment. All right. 
So gate skip. This is the skip that makes any percent entirely possible. Essentially what you're going to want to do is instead of heading out of this little door, you're going to head out the front door this time. What you're going to do is you're going to do a little bite there, you're going to do a jump over this way, and then you're going to do a dive in here, and then you're going to head kind of towards this corner here. Now, for top players, we do a bit of a funny approach so that we can get a single attempt without any setup really. So we come in a little bit like this, and then we go directly for our dive. Now, there's a lot of nuances to gate skip, but what you just saw there is essentially the fastest gate skip that you can do. Okay? Um, let's go over all of the different ways to set up your dive and everything like that. Um, and I will recommend what you should be doing at various different skill levels and then also alternatives for how you jump off of the tree, etc. Because there is a lot of easier methods than what I just did there. Okay. So to start things off, the first, re the first method that I recommend for people is that they go for the light ground texture method is what I call this. So you're essentially aiming to have kind of like Ty's right foot or whatever over this section of light, light terrain. And then from here, you're going to press W and space at the same time. So W and space. And then momentarily after, after doing your W and space, okay, kind of like when you're here, okay, you then want to do your right click, okay? So that will be your bite, okay? Now there's an invisible wall that goes along this area here. This invisible wall, if you make contact with it before you do your bite, well, you're pretty much, pretty much out of luck, okay? You need to do your bite on your way towards the wall for gate skip. All of the other ground swims in the game, to be honest, you kind of need to do them up against a wall, so this one's a little bit weird. However, in this case, it is because there is an invisible wall there, instead of it being like actual solid like voxel terrain or anything like that, that you actually need to do it beforehand. So do your bite beforehand. If you do it too early, okay, so let's say that um, this is actually the point that it would succeed from, and then this is the point where it would fail from being too late or something like that. If you do it too early, so let's say that it was here, or whatever, or let's say th this is the one that you just did, or whatever, then nothing will happen on this one, okay? That means that you did your bite too early. However, if you did it in between the two, so it was this middle line that you did here, um, if you get it on the good timing, then you should get your dive. So this should equal your dive. However, if your alignment is too far off to the side, um, the point that you're kind of aiming for is like kind of just around here. This is the point that you're aiming for. If you are aiming too far over to the left or too far over to the right, you will get a um, you will get a bite instead of a dive. Bite instead of dive. Okay, so you need to be really careful of where you are with your left and right alignment. And then also keeping in mind that if you do your bite after, you know, this range here or whatever, if you do your bite after this range, this will also cause a bite. Okay, so there's multiple things that can cause bites to happen. There's alignment and there is too late on your timing. Okay, so those are the different rules that are coming into play there when you are doing gate skip. Okay, so I'm going to line up my foot here. Okay, my right foot is over that area. And then, okay, as I said, I'm going to go forward and then I'm going to do my jump. So I'm going to do my jump or whatever, just here. And then I'm going to do my bite before I hit the invisible wall, which is just there. So this is what it looks like, jump and W at the same time. Okay, and you can see I went pretty quickly for my right click. So I'm going jump, right click. Okay, jump, right click. Jump, right click. So that time I had a bit of a weird alignment. Jump, right click. Okay, so now there's a few other things to keep in, keep in mind here, okay? Um, as I mentioned, okay, you've got that invisible wall, so this gives you an actual idea of physically where it is. So that invisible wall is located pretty much, pretty much right there, as you saw. Okay, so you need to get your dive before that. Okay, now, next things is ground scams, okay? Sometimes you'll hit the ground and it will put you out to the side or whatever, even when you get your dive. 
I haven't been getting too many of them here. But once I do enough swims, you'll see that sometimes I'll get bonked into the water or whatever. In that case, I have my mouse turned out to the side, so it kind of like pushed me even further out, okay? You can also see that the tide is going up and down as well. This can also affect whether something gives you, like knocks you out of your swim or not as well, if you are close on the edge of it there. So generally you want to kind of have like a little, you kind of want to be aimed in the center here because if you go quite far right, I find that's when you get launched out to the side more. So see how I hit the terrain there and it launched me way out to the side. So that's what happens if you're rotated too far over to the left quite often is you can get a big launch out to the side there and it can ground scam you. But quite easily as well, you can kind of just stick on the ground. So it's a bit, bit of a finicky one, but this is the method that I recommend most new runners go for. As you can see there, ground scam, ground scam. And there we go. Okay, so if a ground scam happens, as long as you're not spamming your right click, this is why especially I was saying not to spam your right click on things, because if you do your early bite, then you'll see that you you pretty much 100% of the time go into a bite here. This is why I was talking about it in other areas of the game, not to do spam bites when you're doing your ground swims, but it can still work. It's just something to be cautious of because failing a ground swim with a bite into the ground is a lot more costly in terms of your time because I need to not get it here. Okay, so failing with a bite, it takes like two to three seconds to recover from that, which is why we prefer to just have a no dive happen. Once you've done it enough, you will struggle to fail it sometimes. Um, but essentially, yeah, like as long as a no bite is happening, you know that you've got the right alignment and stuff and just delay a little bit beyond there. The bite should be quite quickly after you jump though, okay? So jump bite, jump bite, jump bite, okay? All right, so now let's go over faster um, resetting for your dive attempts, okay? So if you lose your dive here or whatever, you've done a bite, any of those different things or whatever, so you're here. The easiest way to get back into it really quickly um, and to do it fast, for top players, we will typically do an AS, um, ASDW. So we go and do like just a little 360 there. And we will kind of just memorize and have that like um, rhythm in our heads so that we can jump from the correct point and correct angle and everything like that. So we just maintain our camera angle and we just send it. That's what we will do when we want to go for quick reattempts. And that means that we can get a reattempt within like one or one or two seconds, that kind of thing. Cause you know, if we fail it like that, it, damn it. Sometimes it's hard to fail. But see how quickly like you can just get those reattempts in. It's not like doing a BLJ where it takes like several seconds to get a reattempt. It's literally like one or two seconds when you're doing this method. So if you have a 50 to 75% success rate on getting your swims, you'll only lose one or two seconds. So that's not too bad. All right. The other methods for getting your swim here. So of course there's that like looping back method. We've talked about the um, light ground texture or whatever, just over there. The one that I was just mentioning before. That's the one that I recommend for new runners. There is... Some people that may prefer to do this ice method. So you kind of aim towards the door there and then you aim across this light beam and then you set up an ice platform like that. I set it a little bit too close, but that is one option. Um, I wouldn't really favor this in any conditions really because you have a lot more setup involved and honestly, like you're almost just as likely to get a ground scam off of that one. So I wouldn't bother considering the extra setup involved. Also, another thing, when you're doing that like light ground texture method is use the walking mode, okay? So for me, I have it on control, it's shift by default, okay? This walking mode allows you to really precisely get into position here and also make sure that Ty is facing the correct direction because see how if Ty is facing the wrong way, it makes him like do like a 180 or whatever, but it has him go off to the side, okay? So make sure that you finish with a forward brace or at least a side press or something like that, okay? Just to make sure that he's not going the wrong way. Yeah, really do need to finish with that forward press. All right, so that is enough on how to get your swim. If you are still struggling on getting your swim and you would like to start working on your, on your tree swim, in the practice mod, we have this pontoon coming across here, and then you can get the easy swim off of the center pillar. Okay, make sure that you have the swimming ability before you actually try to do anything. Because if you don't have the swimming ability, you're just going to continually bite into the ground. Okay, we've definitely done that a few times. <laughs> so, you swim across here. Um, also, a cool thing as well is we've got different teleporters to take you to different points. Okay, so if you fail gate skip from the tree, 
you fall down onto this teleporter and it takes you to that reset point. And it also, that sign over there, actually puts you into the correct location with the correct angle, I believe. Yep, so that gives you the location and the angle. It might be turned a little bit too far out to the right, but yeah, <laughs> it's what it is. I would aim a little bit left of what I have it set on the practice mod there. Bad Lawrence, I set that one up. All right. So the next thing is the tree. This is one that can mess up new players quite a bit. Um, and the thing of why this trick is so hard to learn in its entirety is simply because it takes so much time to string the two bit the two bits together. Because if you only have like a 5% um, success rate on the first part and then you start trying to do the second part, well, you're going to start with having like a 0% success rate on the tree. And that's going to be quite demoralizing. So... I would recommend once you're happy with like, you know, getting your dive or whatever, like 20% of the time or something like that, probably just go to doing some of the center pillar or whatever, or just continue to work on this because it's a very important one, but you can work on your center pillar and then just, you know, force a whole bunch of attempts into this tree here. Um, for context, without any tools or proper tutorials or anything like that, it took me around three hours to figure out how to do gate skip consistently. Um, and that was getting to like, 30 or 40 percent consistency so it can be tough and that's even being like one of the faster learning runners or anything like that as well so don't be too discouraged okay um there's better resources out there we have better methods and stuff like that now um i have seen people get it in as little as like 10 or 20 minutes before that um so for the tree here you it's kind of similar to mission impossible where if you swim up too early, you could just lose your swim there. Okay, that is a very common one that happens when people are rushing. Also, another way to get the swim here is as you're running in, okay, W and D as you're running in here, and then you come off of D and just swap to W and then do your dive as well. That's quite a common backup that we do as well. Um, once you've failed your dive, it's just a nice way to approach and come in there. Anyway, so make contact with the tree. And basically what you want to do is you want to think of where is Ty's stomach pointing. Okay, so you can see how Ty's stomach or whatever is facing into the tree here. Now, right now, I don't have my camera at a very good angle just because I'm trying to let you see how Ty's stomach is on the tree. But you want to follow Ty's stomach and then you want to follow these angles on the tree you want to remain on this face of the tree okay if you shift onto another side of the tree if you shift onto that side you're going to end up swimming off of the tree and if you swim off of that side you're also going to swim off of the tree out to the side okay so remain on this like center part of the tree okay and just pay attention to where his stomach is and then just rotate left and right a little bit if you need to stop suddenly you can go into your scope that's fine okay so just slowly make your way up if you're tapping, make sure that you're not tapping too quickly, that it's increasing your swimming speed. Okay, so just take it gently up here, pay attention to where his stomach is, and keep it on that same face of the tree the whole way up. All right. Now, the tree is starting to get a bit narrower here. Okay, and this is where I need to start drawing again. Okay, so once you're getting up to this point here, um, once you're getting to kind of like this height here, up to about this height, eh, Kind of up to up to this height. This is the range that you want to take your gate skip at. Okay, so what you're going to do is you swim, and you're still just going flat up the tree. This is for the, the easy method. Okay, you're going to swim up into anywhere inside of these leaves, basically. If you're higher, it will be a little bit easier. Just make sure that you don't go beyond, like, see how, like, there's these, like, little upside-down Vs or whatever. Make sure that you don't get into the top few of those upside-down Vs or whatever. You want to be a little bit down from them. So kind of up here is, like, a really good height. Just around here this is a really good height okay and what i'm going to do is think of this tree as a pole okay so this is like a little cylinder or whatever like a little cylinder cylindrical pole okay i want to swim directly into it okay <laughs> let's not draw directly into ty's ass um i want to swim directly into the pole but slightly on the right side of it that is going to put me going around the tree okay and I'm going to do the swimming with my jump button, okay? Do not do it with W or your joystick. Or whatever. You need to let go of your joystick during this section if you're doing it on controller, okay? And you are going to go in like this. Ah, D. 
Damn. <laughs> Losing focus between my like um, drawing thing and and the game. So apologies, I'll just swim back up there. I had to do it fairly quickly because I was running out of air. But essentially, you get into that height again. Okay. And let's try and not have those little bits of leaves in the way. So I'm in, in that little cylindrical area here again. Okay. Nicely like that. I'm going to swim to the side and then that's going to put me in that treading water state. Okay. I'm not pressing any arrow keys at that moment. And then once Ty is like standing in that treading water state. Okay. You know, he has his boomerangs out to the side or whatever, that kind of thing. He's smiling. <laughs> Once Ty is standing there um, in his treading water state or whatever, you're then going to jump. Well, sorry. You're then going to turn the camera. Okay. So turn the camera. Okay. So his eyes are going to be pointing out this way or whatever. His eyes are pointing to the side. And then once you have turned the camera, you're then going to jump. Okay, so you're going to jump, and then as you get to the top of your jump, okay, so just here, there's two options. You can either do a bite, or you can go for the ledge grab. Okay, the bite is considerably easier, and what I would recommend that you do most of the time. I actually still bite quite often, okay, and if I'm doing it, and I'm considered one of the best players, you should probably do it as well. It is a lot easier. Um, you can even overshoot the entire gate, it's that much of a difference. You can even do it from the wrong side of the tree and still make gate skip, okay? It probably makes the tree about 50% easier if you do the bite, okay? So please do it. Um, the reason why we, like, top runners sometimes don't do it is because we believe the, like, biting preparation in the air and then, like, smashing Ty's face into the ground loses, like, half a second more than a ledge grab. That is the only reason, okay? Do not risk your run for half a second. It is not worth it, Okay. Even I don't do that, even when I'm red going into the end game, unless I'm versus like double golds or something. Okay, so don't bother. Just do the bite. So, once you get to that top part of the thing, maybe even just a smidge after it or whatever, like once you're starting to approach like the angle that your bite would go, essentially what's happening is when you do your bite, okay, actually, let's see. When you do your bite, okay, this is like the trajectory that you would that you would get when you take your jump when you do the bite you're essentially locking in an angle like that okay so you want to do your bite somewhere around this point like just a smidge after the apex of your jump but if you do it at the apex of your jump it's fine all right so i'm going to set my camera turn to the side jump w right click okay nice and easy okay and you can see how much space i had there it was a decent bit Did that one from a little bit of a funny spot. There we go. Now, I'm going to go over the timing of your inputs here. Okay? So you want to get into that nice high section there. It makes it a lot easier. Okay? If you're towards the top of those upside down Vs compared to the bottom, it is possible. In fact, I'll show you how low you can get a gate skip. It's just easier if you do it higher though. So you can get a gate skip from all the way down here basically. Almost. And you can also get it from the opposite side. So this should get it. There we go. Note how I slid off there. If I was just holding W, that would have worked just fine. So make sure that you're holding W coming out of it. And then I'll also show you that if you do accidentally come off on the wrong side here, you can also get it as well if you use the biting method and see how I almost overshot it there as well. Okay, so the bite makes it a lot easier. The grabbing method, this is what it looks like. It's quite a bit more sketch. The reason why it's more sketch is because you need to flick your mouse out to the side and then you need to flick back in so that you are approaching the gate forward, okay? Because if you are at too much of an angle, okay, you won't get your ledge grab, okay? So I'll do one at too much of an angle here. Gotta love ground scams and late bites. Okay. So see how... Okay. I kind of like just barely had it within the acceptable angle there. Okay. But if I was any more turned to the right, it wouldn't have worked. Okay. So let's go over the timing of how you want to get that bite input in. Okay. So 
the way that we do it, okay, is we do our space to push ourselves into the training water state. Set our camera so that we're facing somewhere. Let me just go down so that you get a bit, bit a little bit better vision. So you want to be turned out kind of facing kind of facing towards here. This is kind of where you want to be facing here. Okay. Um, cause there's quite a bit of like invisible wall that kind of comes up to like here-ish, that kind of thing. So you need to be turned out to the side so that you can get around that. So just on there. Okay. Um, if you're too far to the right, then you won't be able to get enough distance across or whatever. So you're kind of needing to be within that angle range. Okay. It is possible. It is possible to, um, it is possible to remember what I'm saying. I'm struggling to remember. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember what I was going to say there. Um, anyways, the way that I time things out here. Ah, yes, this was it. You can kind of like over rotate yourself to the right a little bit here and then you can do that like tree push style here or whatever but it's a little bit more sketchy when you're coming around the side of the tree so i would recommend doing it just from the front side of the tree normally um some people do like to set their camera up beforehand or whatever um that's also not something that i would really recommend i would recommend setting your camera while you're in the treading water state also what the treading water state is is this okay so see how ty is kind of just levitating in the water here okay this is what we call treading water from here you can do a jump and then you can do jump w right click okay and the way that you want to time it is you want to go but on okay so but on is the is the like jump and then w okay the closer that you can get your w to the jump the better because that'll give you more distance that you can travel okay but by all means Okay, by all means possible, make sure that you don't go forward and then do your jump, okay? Because if you go forward and then do your jump, you're actually not, like, you'll actually take yourself out of the tree. So I'll just show you that here, okay? So instead of swimming forward with space, okay, I'm going to swim forward with W. So just have a look at this. So I'm up here now, okay, and then I'm going to swim into it with W instantly lose it okay that is what we call a w swim okay and that's because you're essentially swimming out of your trading water state and swimming off of the tray okay so from here you swim up the tree okay and it doesn't just apply to when you're doing this swim here as well we actually quite often swim into this with w for top players because we do a momentum swim um but when you're in this treading water state here, if you go space and sorry, if you go W and then space, that is what we call a W space fail because you swam out of it before you actually did your jump. Okay. So it's really important. It goes space W right click. Okay. And the timing on that once again is but Okay. It's like you're telling a joke, you know, or a bad joke or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, so swimming into the pole, tree pushes you off to the side. You don't want to swim off to the side yourself because see how you can lose it there, okay? Let the tree push you off to the side. Don't swim off the side yourself, okay? So we are going to swim up the tree here. And then I go into my trading, set my camera, but Okay, nice and simple. But And if you're looking for a goal to aim for, I think my mum has gotten this like three or four times in a row. So <laughs> have fun trying to get that one. Lawn's mum is good. Lawn's mum is good. All right. So simply space to swim off of it here. Set the camera. Put on. Okay. That is your gate skip. Okay. All right. Now I'll talk about momentum here a little bit. This is more of an advanced thing. Okay. Um, also some, one other thing that people like to do as well as they're swimming to the bottom of the tree is some of them will go into a scope just so that they kill their speed. Okay. Um, oh, there's also one other big thing. If you're struggling to get up the tree, let's just talk about the angle that you got the tree. So if you go up the tree like this, it's really hard to see and kind of like know what you're doing exactly. Okay. So if you're looking straight up, really hard to see and know exactly what's happening. Also got to love these dives. There we go. On the flip side, if you are swimming directly into the tree at max speed, if you even slightly come off the side, see how it just launches you out to the side there. Okay? The moment that you come off the correct side of the tree. 
Okay, so what I would recommend is that you swim up the tree with your camera kind of facing up like 45 degrees, that kind of thing. Maybe even a little, like, yeah, around 45 degrees. That's kind of what you're looking for there, to have like a nice, to have good vision and to also have like not too much pressure going into the tree because it comes back to that analogy of a pole. Also, I love the ground, ground scams here. That was too far left. That's a land ground scam. That was just based off of the terrain pushing me off to the side. So just here, if you're facing too much into the tree, really easy to flop off to the side if you're like looking into it really flat and especially if you're swimming with lots of speed, okay? Your speed will be more effectively used the higher up you're turning your camera. So now let's talk about momentum, okay? Basically what we do is we just swim full speed or at like three out of four speed. I'll explain speeds in a moment, but essentially you swim with momentum and then as you're approaching, the leaf section, you come off of your swim and see how Ty takes a moment to slow down. Okay, you use that to carry you off the side of the tree. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And see how the momentum carried me into the side of the tree. Unfortunately, I miss, messed up the ledge grab part, and that's why I quite often like to do bites. So I came off of it there, and then boom, nice and simple. Okay, uh, let's talk about swim speeds here. So swimming speeds, if you press space once and then you hold it, this is swimming speed one. If you come off of space or add in like a W or whatever, you can see this is swimming speed two. And then you do it one more time. This was swimming speed three. This is also like your first dolphin kick speed. And then if you do that one more time, this is now swimming speed four. <coughs> this is your maximum swimming speed. Doing it any more than that isn't going to speed you up or anything like that. I would recommend that you stay on W. Um, there's no point in like spamming your space or anything like that at this point. But that is essentially all of your swimming speeds there. Um, quite often, one thing that we will do is we will do our tree at like a free speed if we're feeling a little bit sketched out. So I'll quite often like come off of my thing here for a moment and then come back on. In that case, I was turned too far out to the right, so I came off of the tree too aggressively. There we go. That's your fastest style of gate skip there. All right, now there was also one other thing that I wanted to point out with Mission Impossible for practice mode as well. If you fail your Mission Impossible, then there is a few things that you can do as well. I didn't mention these earlier, but if you come up here, this is just for practice mode. It's got really good reset points for this. If you fall down into the void, there you go. You get teleported back here and you can go for that again. There's also a teleporter in the hub two area as well. So with that all out of the way, I'll show you one last gate skip. Of course, I <laughs> didn't get my dive. So one last gate skip, surfacing a little before there, turning in there, go for the fast reattempt. There we go. Only lost like one or two seconds there and then up for the dive and then I'll go for the bite method. Nice and simple, that angle. And then you want to try and jump over that rainbow scale and then into cast pass okay and that is gate skip um what i would recommend doing okay what i would recommend doing is instead of like especially when you're going to do your first run gate skip is not an easy skip to get okay it is one of the hardest skips in the game so I really do recommend if you're just learning the run and just getting the feel for everything, don't have gate skip as the first skip that you want to do, okay? Instead, allow yourself to use the boomerang cheat code and just get a run completed, okay? Try everything else in the game. Gate skip can take multiple hours for people to learn how to do, okay? So the boomerang cheat code, it is listed on the Tai one practice mod, but I will just say the instructions here. Okay, so when I say left and right, I am meaning the arrow keys on the, when you're on controller, um, assuming that you haven't rebound things on your controller, um, it will be D-pad left and right for these for these directions, but left, right, left, uh, sorry, the like arrow keys, okay? Not, not A and D. So left, right, left, right, cutscene, cutscene, click, click, cutscene, click. Okay, and you'll hear that like little guitar strum. Also, you cannot use cheat codes when you're on hardcore. That's why I had to change the save file. Okay, and that will give me access to the zappy rang. Okay, the zappy rang is what opens the gate. Okay, this will allow you to do the entire run 
without having anything that just hard blocks you. Okay. Another skip as well that I would recommend potentially not doing in your first run is mill skip. Okay. So this is another one as well that the practice mod is going to let me show you real quick. So this is another skip that I would recommend that you don't do on your first run as well is mill skip potentially. So instead of mill skip, what you can do is you get this thunder egg over here. And then you return the koalas or whatever. You return the koalas across the mountain. And then you would be able to do your time attack here. Alternatively, you could do the bridge on the river tie time attack. That one is a little bit shorter. That is another option for you, but it does add an extra menu. And so they're about the same, honestly. So those are kind of your options there. And that allows you to entirely skip mill skip, which is one of the ones that is like a high reset point. Because if you fall down that mountain, it's tough. However, if you're doing it not on hardcore, you can get multiple attempts at it. So yeah, I think that is pretty much everything regarding regarding gate skip and like what you should be trying to do and what you should not be trying to do on your first run. So I'll do one more gate skip here and then we'll move into cast pass. But yeah, definitely, like I think I even did my first run using cheat codes or whatever. Um, to open the gate here just so that I was able to finish it off and then I went and learned gate skip like pretty much the next day and it was definitely the right call for me so I would recommend that you do that if you are learning the game instead of spending a few hours trying to get a skip that is on the more difficult side um, once you do get it you can easily get gate skip like with only losing like one or two seconds okay like it is a trick that is very much skill based. It is not luck based at all, like BLJs or anything like that in ASM64. Of course, there is other weird things with BLJs in that game, but whatever. Like, this is very consistent. Don't let it deter you. All right, so I'll cut there and continue with Cast Pass. So, for Cast Pass, you're simply going to walk past all of these ninjas here. Also, these are drop bears, very deadly Australian animal. As you can see. Clearly very deadly. Um, anyways, also practice mod, making it so that you don't take damage there repeatedly. You're welcome. For this one, what I recommend is that you get a little bit past this like lighter section just here. So I'll draw a line here. You basically want to be lined up behind this, and then you kind of come up here, you turn around, and then you're going to jump around here, that kind of thing. This is where you're looking to jump from. And what you're aiming for is you're aiming for around this kind of point here and what's going to happen is also make sure that you do not do any glides what's going to happen is you're going to hit slightly too far right on the tree here but the tree is going to kind of put push you off to the left here okay and then what you do is you hold your scope okay and then that will plant you on top of the tree here okay and then you won't be able to slide when you're in your scope okay so this is what that's going to look like Okay, so see how the tree pushed me to the left, and then I ended up on this lower section of the tree. Now, if I leave my scope, see how I slide out of it. Okay, so I'll do that again. See how the tree pushes me out to the side. Okay, let the tree do the work for you. Okay, so we're intentionally aiming too far to the right and then using the scope to make it all work for us. Okay, and that in that case, I jumped from too far up, okay? And that has you, like, either get a miniature jump, like what just happened on that last one there, or you can overshoot the entire tree. Also, if you face too far to the left, see how I can go over the entire tree as well, okay? So let the tree push you to the side. Now, once I'm here, okay, what you want to do is you want to go from your scope to then pressing spacebar, like the frame that you, the frame or two after you leave your scope, okay? So these are called scope jumps, okay? These are basically just making sure that you are taking off from the ground as soon as possible, okay? And I'll just point my camera down at what my hand is doing here, just so you can see it in a little bit more detail. So for me, I have my scope on my tab, which is this button here, okay? So I'm holding W with my middle finger, um, scope with my fourth finger, and then I'm going to do jump with my thumb, okay? So I come off of my scope and jump in the next frame. And then also try to add some glides in there as well. Some flutter gliding. Okay. So not too complicated. All right. So from here, you're going to go have the tree do that push to the side here. And then you're going to aim towards this like lighter green section here. Okay. And then you're going to do that scope jump and you're going to jump, glide, and then turn a little bit out to the side. Now, 
I'm not intentionally getting it here, but you essentially want to be gliding. You essentially want to be gliding in like from this direction here or whatever. And then once you get to like these last parts of like spraying out water here or whatever, this is around where you want to go for your dive. Okay. Is kind of like around this line here or towards like the later section of of this like little edge here okay the easy way that well like the non full out of bounds way that you can do is then just dropping in here ironically because i didn't jump out of that though i actually did end up with the full out of bounds method still all right we've also got little teleporters here as well that take you up to things a little bit quicker so i'll show you what it looks like with the full dive here and everything so I get past that spraying bit of water, and then I go for my dive. Now, the really simple setup is to swim, okay, aiming for the height of the lowest metal platform, okay, and then once I also get in line with these metal platforms is then when I will turn towards the end of the level, okay? So it'll kind of be like more at a bit of an angle or whatever, making sure that you're not going up, of course, so it'll be like, you know, you kind of come across there or whatever. I'll... I'll draw in a little bit more as I get closer to it. But this is like the really conservative way here. So I swim over to these metal platforms and then once these metal platforms are out of sight, I then turn to the side and then this one just here, this final section, okay? This is where I want to surface, okay? Underneath the level and go into a portal, okay? So that's all going to look like this. And you can also check on the map. It will be this one here. That is the one that you want to surface on. You can also tell which one it is because there is like a little um, chain as well pointing underneath it there. So there you go. There's also a sign there for practice mod to teleport you back up. Now there's another option as well. Um, if you're struggling to get the tree method, this is the other way that you can do. You can run directly. Oh, hmm. I'll show you the, the way to get there. But essentially you just continue running through this section here. That was a little funny. So you run down to this section here, and then you're basically aiming to run forward and have it so that you're not um, drifting off left and right. And then you want to have it so that um, so that this wall is dead in front of you. Like this whole rock or whatever isn't moving and it's dead in front of you. Okay, so that is your line here. Okay, and then rules of ground swimming, like in terms of like if you bite too soon, nothing happens, too late, then it was too late, <laughs> that kind of thing. So you get your ground swim here and then just swim into this corner and then look up and don't swim with W at all. You'll land over here and then you want to go jump and then W and then just glide out over this way. Okay. So that is a, that's like a fairly easy method that you can do if you're struggling to get over the tree. Like if you're struggling to land on the tree or get your jump out of the tree or anything like that. So that just gives you an option. But I would recommend that you do the tree because that is one that you can pick up fairly quickly. Uh, for context as well, the tree one saves about a minute to like a minute 10, that kind of thing. And the other one saves like 50 seconds or something like that. Oh, nice. That one's actually just a full stick on the tree. So anyways, I jump out this way and I'm gliding out this way, get my dive. And this is a more aggressive line. Okay, so I swim out to around here. And as you can see, if you fall down because you go for a too aggressive line, okay, we actually have teleporters to send you back here. So you don't need to main menu if you're on the practice mod. If you're not on the practice mod, you need to main menu to recover from that, which can lose you like a good 20, 30 seconds. Also, I let go of my scope there. All right, so let's try that again. I'll show you that aggressive line. Turning a little bit too early. My right line isn't too bad, it's just the early turn there. I haven't done this in a bit. So something like that, okay? That'll save a few seconds. All right, now I'll show you what to do if you fail getting the dives and such. So if you accidentally dive too early here, this happens, okay? Easiest way to save this one is just swim over to the side here towards this ground and it will let you redive and then just do the same thing with going to these metal platforms and such. If you fail it over here, oh, 
Of course, that's not going to be a thing in the actual game. And in, in the actual speedrun, sorry. Stop rushing it, lol. So once again, if you do it too early, you can also sometimes get a redive there on the way back down. In fact, I'll try and show that off real quick. So you can get a redive by jumping out of that early dive. Ooh. Damn. Okay, so you can kind of do it like that. Okay, so you can get a redive like that. That'll save a bit of time. Um, I think that's kind of everything, honestly, when it comes to cast skip. Just make sure that you're not turning too early and you should be good. Um, you can turn too late though. So if you just head out towards these like metal platforms forever or whatever, let's just say that if you can't see anything in front of you, like from the actual level, then you should probably turn towards the end because if you go this way forever, you will lose it eventually. Ironically, actually, I didn't actually go out of the water, but if you're going way out here, you're losing a lot of time. So yeah, um... I'll do it one more time, and then I'll go for the portal, and that'll be into Cast Pass. There we go. Aiming towards that little upside-down V there. And then I see the chain, so I know it's the right one. And then I'm just going to spam my cutscene button and surface near the center of the thing. And then that takes me for a portal. Also, one other little note on cast pass as well. If you are doing the um, section above ground, <laughs> I may as well show you this. If you are doing the section above ground, okay, you definitely should, um, what do you call it? You want to kind of like ride down the like side of the train here or whatever. Um, this is quite common to be done on controller because if you are on auto center camera, okay, it'll constantly make your camera look downwards, okay? So you kind of want to dive into the water here and then you can just swim through this whole thing. I saw someone using all of the spy eggs and stuff like that at one point. So definitely swim through this. You'll save like a good like 20, 30 seconds. Um, I'll just show what it looks like on controller because it's pretty whack and there will be some new console runners that see this probably. Okay, so I'm on controller now. So see how my thing is making me look down like that? I basically need to be wobbling my stick side to side to be able to swim through this whole thing. Okay, it is possible but just not easy to manage. So this is essentially the way that you want to do this. Alternatively, if you don't have track body, uh, sorry, auto center camera, if you don't have that on, then it's a piece of cake. You do need to, of course, be aware of where your camera is pointing though. So on that setting, you just go like this and your camera isn't like constantly looking into the, into the void or whatever. So it's a lot simpler. So yeah, that is everything that you need to know about Cast Pass. Um, yeah. All right, so I will cut there for Cast Crest. All right, so for Cast Crest here, we're going to jump in, and we're immediately going to go for a bite boost, dive into the water, and then you're going to surface, jump, and then do a bite there. That'll get you up to the furl there, and then you're going to jump, cutting this corner across the Shazza, and then you can jump cutting another corner across there. Now I'll show you another slightly faster method as well. Um, this one's quite difficult though. You basically want to surface and I accidentally got a frame. I got a jump on the frame that I touched the bomb there. So you're essentially going to do like a little hop onto the bomb. This can save like one second, that kind of thing. And it can be backed up with the other strategy as well. But this is the fastest way of getting in there. And then what you want to do for this next section, um, I'll do one more on the bomb thing, just so that it's shown in a little bit more detail. Okay, 
So with this bomb, okay, you want to be aiming towards this kind of like line of rivets here, okay? And then you want to jump and then get your bite, okay? If the bomb goes off, typically that'll like mess with the throw position and will make it so that you won't be able to get it. Um, and then you'll have to kind of like swim around. So like if I come up here or whatever, you'll see that this is like, let's say that I messed this up a few times or whatever. This typically messes with the throw and then the throw can walk to the side. Um, doesn't always happen, you can still quite often recover it, but sometimes you may need to come back across to the side. Which would involve then swimming up around like this. And then you can continue with Shazza. Now, what you want to do here is you want to cycle onto your right boomerang. And then, <coughs> basically, the thing that pace locks you here is starting the, sh um, the shadow fight. Um, and particularly shooting the first button okay so what i want to do i'll just let these bats get me here but essentially what you want to do is you want to get kind of like to kind of like here something like that and you want to aim quite a bit off to the side there and try and shoot that button from as far back as you can so i missed it there unfortunately but should be able to get it from around here and the further back you shoot it from the better now once you have shot shadow Sorry, once you've shot the button, okay, see this line? Should have dealt with those dudes first. Once you have shot Shadow, this is a big thing that will mess people up, but you need to make sure that you get on this side of the line, okay? This line of rivets here. You need to yeet yourself over to this side of it, okay? It doesn't matter if you think that you saw her spinning on the thing, okay? Walk over here. It doesn't cost you anything. You've got like 10 or 20 seconds when you get up to the next area. So make sure that she is spinning in the vent before you go to the next area. Okay, so I will really clearly show that um, in this just here. Also, you can back up the bomb jump, okay, by just doing this. Nice and simple. Also, you want to be on standard boomerang so that you get more range. Also, that was a wonderful jump. <laughs> oh my goodness. You didn't see that. Okay, so I'm on right boomerang. There we go. And now, see how Shadow is spinning? I know that she will take damage from that now. And now we're going to run across here. And there is a funny little skip that you can do there. However, it doesn't save any time because Shadow takes a really long time to get around here. Now, to get around these different things, okay, you can simply just jump out to the side and get a pretty chill glide there, honestly. So just jump around them. Um, if you want, you can wait for the lava. You've got a lot of time. You basically can afford to take like three or four um, sections of, kind of three, three sections of damage or whatever, maybe two. Um, to make sure that you don't um, lose any time for Shadow. So I was lollygagging quite a bit there, but essentially once she gets across that line, once she like flies across um, this pipe here, that's when I shoot the button, and then I wait for her to be spinning, and then I jump on the vent. Okay? If I run up before I see her spinning, there is a massive chance that she will chase you. You will get up here, and then she won't take damage. And then you will need to go back down and you lose 30 or 40 seconds. So by absolutely all means, wait until you see her spinning. Stand back and stand, like stand as far away as you can while looking next to the button. Now the next one, go to your standard boomerangs and then just aim slightly to the left of the thing here. And when she does her scream there, you shoot. Um, admittedly, I was a little bit distracted, so, so she may have tried to fly up towards me. Okay, no. And then that gets it here, and this would take you into final battle. So, I'm just going to go over Shadow one more time fully, and just pay attention to how I am checking for where she is going. Unfortunately, I messed up the bomb jump, but whatever. Uh, looks like I need to do this on a new save real quick. There we go. Pfft. All right, now I've got my ranks.
forgot to do the one jump, but whatever. So on my right boomerang here. And there we go. I see her spinning, so I'm happy to jump on now. And then I'm just going to run and jump nice and tight so that even if I did have a bad cycle, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I would hit that thing, but I'm just going to jump around it. Hit that dunny just in case, but not, not too big a deal if you're on hardcore. I'd like to swap to flame ring here just because I'm going to need to kill. Well, I want to kill all of those dudes so that they can't shoot me. And now I'm just waiting until she crosses that line there. I'm also waiting for her to do her scream. Um, you can shoot the button a bit sooner, but basically once she crosses that line, you can then run forward. In this case, I just bonked into her or whatever while she was taking damage, but it's fine. Like, there's like 10 or 20 seconds window for you to get up here, so no time loss. This is basically an auto-scroller for all intents and purposes from when you hit the first button. But you would be shocked at how many people lose runs here. I would say 90% of new runners lose over a minute on Shadow for like their first 5 or 10 runs. So it is paramount to pay attention, waiting for her to scream. She just screamed there. And I'm not going to go through because I just want to point out one visual reference as well for you. But there we go. That would be the Shadow, shadow Fight finish there. So I'm just going to go back across and just show exactly where um, that scream happens. Also... Another little thing as well, if you are running on hardcore, um, this is just a thing for you to know, because obviously if you die, you lose the run. Um, Shadow will scream as she kind of gets to around this point here. So if you see her over here, shoot at the button then. Okay, remember your standard boomerangs have the most range. If you try and use your flame rings from here, this probably won't work. They will curve around. Okay, so if you're using any other boomerangs, you need to be closer. All right. But yeah, the thing that I wanted to point out was that on Hardcore, there is going to be a pie here, which will give you full health, okay? So if you're concerned about your health at all for this section, just grab that pie, and you'll be good. In this case, I don't want to get killed. And there we go. There's another basket here, but you shouldn't take any damage at that point, because your health will reset the moment that you go through this loading screen. Because you saw that I was at one health there. You'll see that I go through here. And now I'm full health again. Okay, so I will cut there. And then we will finish with Final Battle. And Doomscope. Alright, so. Final Battle and Doomscope. First thing is. Um, I forgot to mention this at the end of Cast Crest. But after you've shot that third button. You want to swap to your Frosty Rings. So that you load into this level with your Frosty Rings on. You don't want to be messing around. Trying to swap to your Frosty Rings in time. So I'll just do a save game there. And then this will make sure that I'm on the correct boomerangs. Okay so final battle. Now I'm on my Frosty Rings. And I'm immediately going to go to the right here. And what you need to do is you need to shoot towards the face of the turret. Okay. Towards the firing end of the turret. Um, if you, you can do it from a bit of an angle, but you can never shoot these from behind, really. Eh. okay, you can, but they take damage a lot. Like, they take the shot a lot better from the front, typically. And what you can do is you can also shoot to ones ahead, so that you then won't take damage going, going into them. Because it's quite common, um, for new runners to take too much damage here, and then they end up taking a bit of damage during the wires section. So that is what a clan turrets looks like. And then I'll swap to flame ranks here. You don't need to use flame ranks to destroy that. Jump over that little bit of fire to preserve health. And then what I like to do here is I like to shoot twice at range. And then I'm aiming towards like the top of these like metal bases here. Because the metal base also does like this allows you to shoot at them. You need to be careful and you can also use some angle abuse as well to avoid shooting the enemies in there. So I'll show that one more time. Um, this section is a lot more awkward on controller. You can see those extra shots that I'm doing to the side just to try and avoid taking damage. And I'm doing like little walks to the side and stuff like that to also avoid taking damage. That was a bit awkward. 
And there we go. Also, just be careful, like, after you've gotten that last turret, try not to jump immediately, because then, like, your camera will get stuck here, and then as you go through, it kind of, like, flips you around. So don't jump too much there. I kind of mess it up there. So just walk straight off of that last one or whatever, and then shoot your way through. Okay. So once again, nice long shot there. And then aiming towards the bases. Try and face quite a bit into things, because as you kind of get turned out to the side more you're exposed to more enemies on the side okay <clears throat> now for doom skip this is a 60 second time save um actually i'll cut before i explain all of this so one moment okay so for doom skip this is a 60 second time save and it has a 30 second reset to it so unless you're under like 35 minutes, 34 minutes, I wouldn't bother trying to go for this skip because it is one of the most punishing skips. Like, it saves less time than mill skip, effectively. Um, and it also, well, there is options over mill skip, um, but saves less time than mill skip and is harder than mill skip as well. Um, so, and then has like a similar reset time if you allow yourself to do um, death warps or whatever. Um, oh, yeah, there's also one other thing I need to mention on mill skip as well. So I'll go back and record that. But anyways, uh, for most people, when you're starting out, just go for the doom ring normally. Okay. It's one minute extra. It's not that big of a deal. Okay. Um, what you'll notice is how if I press A and D here, I get quite high sensitivity for how quickly I'm turning side to side. However, if I hold my walking hotkey, see how this like angle that I'm turning is way less sharp. So this is like low sensitivity mode. You get that with your walking hotkey. And this is really important for taking like, for one, it allows you to take like nice efficient lines on your doom ring and such. But for two, it also makes it so that you're not going to accidentally make an over adjustment when you're doing doom skip. That's actually when it's more important. So anyways, also, those were scrapes. <laughs> um, and we'll go through the whole doom, doom pipe section or whatever. But this is going to take you to the end of the game, though, for just like a standard run or whatever. And this is totally viable. Um, you can even get sub-30 without doing doom skip. It's not easy, but you can do it. All right. Currently, the only person that would have had the pace to do that is Karma. I'm not quite there. <laughs> He's cracked. So you want to take left path there, just because um, going from left to right just adds an extra like sideways length across the pipe. It's like only a second difference, but that's so you know. Um, so left path, and then beyond that, things will merge back up. And yeah, like you don't need to scrape things too hard because eventually you'll go on to doom doom skip anyways so getting good at scraping doesn't really mean too much except for just getting control of your doom ring really this one can be stressful for some people but i assure you with a little bit of practice this won't be too big of an issue um some people find the like inversion on controls a bit weird um or lack thereof or whatever i don't know what the correct terminology is there but yeah um, also, in terms of when you're meant to split, I should probably go over that. And I should probably go over when you split in the first place as well in the game. But I like to go under here, but you can also go above and you would split there. The first moment that you see black, basically, is probably what we're going with for splitting. If not, then the loading screen, but they're within point one of each other. So just split around there and mods will retime anything that's needed. Um, the alternative to going through the whole pipe section, um, ironically, I've got all of the turrets and stuff like that here, but I can do the skip here, just like cheap percent or whatever, because um, I have the doom ranks. So the way that you want to do this skip is you want to run into this like far left corner here, and then you want to aim pretty much like straight down, and then you're going to go to the right. Uh, sorry, so aim straight down or whatever, and then you want to go... How do I put it? I wouldn't aim perfectly straight down. You can also do a scope here and then aim for that like little bit of metal there. And then you want to wait like half a second, then press D until you have turned 90 degrees. And then you also want to be pressing up as well, which is W. 
Okay, and then you take a 90 degree turn to the left and then you go straight up. And then once you see things load in, then basically take a 90 degree turn to the left again so that that way you're basically going to like reverse the um, angle at which you're coming in. I'm using a bit more of an a bit more of an aggressive approach here and unfortunately I hit the pipe. Um, that aggressive approach that I'm taking there was like to save like two seconds. But that like gets you up nice and quick there. Um, what I do like to recommend for new runners, this will give you like a lot of space here, is once you get past this little energy beam thing to your right, see that little convergence in the sky up here? I like to aim a little bit below that, so kind of where that um, pontoon in the sky is. That's why I have it there. And then you go S and D to pull, your, like, to turn yourself around 90 degrees. Okay, and then this is like a really long approach because I was drawing in the sky. <laughs> but then what I'm looking for is I'm looking to kind of land it like a plane almost, and I'm looking to come in pretty much level right in at the end there. So what I'll do is I'll come up here. And I'll draw into this a little bit so that you have an idea of where all of the hitboxes and stuff are. Okay. Annoying that this whole thing moves, but whatever. So, <coughs> this whole thing, or let me just get a little bit better angle on it there. So this whole thing is like flattish or whatever. Okay. Annoying how that moves. <laughs> Wait, is there a way that I can... Hold up. I think I know a way that I can do this on the fly here. Mm. Nah, okay, I can't remember how to do that. Anyways, so... What you want to do is you want to kind of like fly in for this is tough you want to fly in to be like flat with that thing or whatever and then i would recommend being on the left side of it so kind of damn. dang it okay it really wants me to do that so I'd recommend being to the left side of it. You can even get it down here as well. But essentially, you've only got like this much space. So it's not too easy to get in here. Okay, you essentially need to aim for that area with the doomerang. Now, yeah. Oh, that was crest instead of final battle. And that's a game crash. Um, well, I guess I can turn off my no idle. Which will make it a bit easier to point at some of this stuff. Yeah, well. Okay. So let's try that again. So up to this section here. So what I was wanting to point out there first thing is probably this. Oh damn, okay. <laughs> it's not giving me a no idle. Whatever. So first thing that I want to point out is notice how there is a change in angle here. Okay. Now, obviously I am exaggerating it, but there is a slight change in angle and this change in angle happens multiple times. Okay. So if you try to level as you're coming in too early, this whole thing is still on a curve. Okay. And if you try to level in for that section while it's still curved, then ultimately what's going to happen is you're going to be coming in flat here or whatever. So you'll be coming in flat here, but then you'll end up going too high and then you'll just hit the wall over here, okay? So instead, you want to be coming in from a little bit above, that's why I was saying landing it like a plane, and you want to land it just at the last moment, and then come through in this little section right near the bottom, 
okay um this little like what do you call it this like little river or whatever that is kind of like the top maybe like a little bit above that so like the top part of the river is kind of the height that you need to get under or whatever or at least be level with to get through so you can see there i clipped through but i still had a slight downwards angle okay so it's quite strict okay so you can see i'm just slightly above the river when i get through okay um the reason why i'm hitting the ground is because i'm not going into this flat so i just turned up a little bit there and then i did some adjustments to get through safely so let's go over practicing this um if you're good getting up into the sky i would recommend just using that um that teleporter thing because if you see here so just jump or whatever at the moment that you get in here this brings you up to teleport um, and this makes it so that you can re-attempt this with like five seconds instead of like 30. So just try and come in like that. Now, let's talk about the other parts here, because it's a little bit funny. And I'll also go inside of the pipe as well. Let's see how I'm leveling right at the very end there. And basically just coming in perfectly flat. Now, another thing that I do as well is I do a little count from the moment that I clip through for when I need to do a down press in case I'm too high. So if one, two, three, okay? And right when that cutscene would have been is basically when I am doing my thing. So it's like one, two, three. Doing it on three, starting with one. A Little bit too low, leveled too early. One, two, three. Okay, so when you would have hit it, that's when you wanna do your down. Okay, you don't wanna do it before because otherwise then you'll just hit the bottom of the inverted pipe which i'll show you momentarily so one two three so that time i might have actually saved it the reason why we do this i'll intentionally cause a fail here is you can go past the cutscene trigger without hitting it so see how i'm inside of the pipe here okay i was fortunate i was able to turn back into it but essentially you can go over top of the trigger if you don't get that down press at the correct timing Usually when you come in flat, you will be low enough that you don't need to do it, but it is possible to go over top of it or go around it. Okay, so that's why that one, two, three is important. One, two, three. So that's when I would have done my down, but I intentionally went past it. So you can see how I'm just in this dark area on the inside of the lip, like on the inside of the end here. Okay, and I can come back into it and it works. So I'll just use this other teleporter to give you a little bit more idea of what's going on here. So this is the ending section here. And basically what's happening is you are coming into this from the from the top or whatever okay you're coming into it from the top and then you are essentially going to be clipping your way back like you're essentially going to be hitting <gasps> i haven't actually ever tried to do this um backwards but essentially you're going to then clip along the top of this area here and you will hit the hit the trigger so i'll just try and go flash along the bottom here and see how okay so even that was too high so there you go you can see right at the bottom there that is where i'm getting that trigger okay so you need to end up actually following that pipe quite closely once you clip through the inside and that's how you're trying to hit the trigger there so i'll try and clip it outside again but unlikely that i'll get it Oh, there we go. So there you go. You can actually clip in and out of the thing. It's just not particularly easy. And there we go. I went past it. Will I be able to rescue it? Nah. <laughs> but yeah, so quite, quite a few nuances to that and everything. Make sure that you are, that you're aware of where those cutscenes and stuff like that are. Um, and you need to get that down press right at the three second mark. So I'll do a few more doom skips as examples. I will also do a few more of the longer versions as well, just so you can see that. Um, I'll also show the cheap percent lines as well. A little bit too aggressive. Okay, those are the cheap percent lines there. And then basically I'm just looking to come right in with right in like by here and then i do one two, two that kind of thing there 
was a little bit tough but when you do it with like that short of like an approach to line up or whatever it's a lot tougher typically i will let myself go at least like two seconds past or whatever two seconds past when i go <coughs> across that point like when i get past um the pipe or whatever so one two like that and i was just counting internally to know when i need to turn down so that is pretty much it when it comes to doomscape um it takes quite a bit of practice obviously if you've done more time messing <laughs> messing around and flying with your doom ring you'll be a lot more comfortable with the movement and everything um but do know that there is no rng on this um karma and i can both get like 15 20 strikes on the skip um when we're in practice so you can get there you can get there it takes quite a bit of time to get down though if you haven't done lots of doomerang flying so just be aware of that um new players i wouldn't really recommend picking it up until you're like below 35 minutes at least it is a fun trick and you can keep it in like your back pocket or whatever but i wouldn't recommend using it regularly in runs until you're like 30 even like 34 minutes but yeah um there's just a few other things that I need to note on other levels. So with Doom Skip done, that is the whole route for the game. So I will see you in any other levels for like just a few wrapping up notes and stuff. And then I'll also talk about more of the one um about more of the one rank stuff as well for two up, because I didn't really mention that in two up. So see you in a moment. So for two up skip one rank. Uh, sorry for um two up single ring route i'm just going to go over this here there's a few ground swims and a few alterations that we make to the route we come across here and then we go boop. keep in mind i wouldn't have two ranks so i'm not going to be doing any gliding here or anything like that but then you essentially continue with this section normally i'll just skip it for now and then the next alteration that we make is at two up skip you essentially just swim through the entire thing instead of going for the you know the thing where you like walk up um and use the fence or whatever for your lineup because you have the swimming ability and this is actually where most of the time save comes for for single rank you get something like eight seconds of time save happening from this one thing of course a lot of that time save is then lost over other parts that you lose time on like shipwrecks and such but so the way you want to do that is you want to run in flat and then turn to the side there swim and there you go so that is how you get that section there and then that button is the same i jumped really soon there pushing those um platforms is one of the things that can save you quite a bit of time i was trying not to glide okay and then for this this is the next thing when you bite that you're then going to want to set your camera this way you will get your thunder egg here as well so it's a bit different um you then want to turn this way and you want to get a nice bite boost and then you immediately want to kind of like turn almost like 45 degrees or whatever and then and then get your dive immediately this dive saves about one to two seconds and then you swim over to around here um you can get your dive like how do i put it actually i'll just get my dive here to show it um you can get a cleaner jump across there just to maintain a bit more speed ah, damn i was meant to keep that <laughs> okay so you can keep your diet like you can keep your swim all the way across here and then you can get like a little jump out of it or whatever and get across here nicely So then you go across into that, and then that brings you into the TA. And I believe you unlock the TA from getting the final thunder egg up here. So then we do our main menu warp. However, I just used a level warp one. And then you go into your time attack. And then for this, pretty simple you run the start of the ta exactly the same as usual doing your bite boost etc 
and then I like to run into this with W and D, and then I'm running forward here, and then I go for a dive here. And then you don't add speed in immediately, you get a slightly um, better turning radius turnaround there. I'll just go for that dive one more time so you can see it. I probably won't win the TA here, but whatever. Okay, so you come into it here, slow return, and I went a little bit high there, so I lost my swim. There we go. So I'll do that one more time. <laughs> Forgot about it. So turning to the side there, and boom. Nice and simple. That is your two up swim. Fun fact as well, there is like a few things where if you get your fund right here and then you hold scope, see how I saw my air and my aqua ranks? I can actually keep my swim into this area. That doesn't work on everything, but there's a few fund eggs that we can use that with. And there is some proposed routes that are being developed that may be able to make use of that. Um, yeah, and then I think the only other thing was going over how to do the fence skip stuff a little bit more consistently as well. So for that, there's one set up here, and that is you run into this little wedge here, and then you aim over here, and you see where this like, little pointy part is, you then aim for that, and then you go to the side, and then basically once Ty's like, shoulder or whatever, Ty's shoulder, makes um, contact with, I think it's the, it's probably the right side there actually, yeah, so makes makes contact with that, might be a little bit later. I might be remembering the wrong point, actually. Yeah, it's probably that. Yeah, that feels better. I wouldn't really recommend using those setups, though. Um, what I would recommend doing is you kind of just set up with this kind of angle here. And then what you're doing is you're just looking to jump and then... <laughs> you don't know how hard that is. That's like 1% success rate. I have to keep this take now. Um, so you have to kind of go at a bit of an angle or whatever and what's happening is as you kind of make it over this like low part here just barely you're then also moving up this way and this is also like lifting tie upwards with your like forwards momentum and then with that you can either like with that little lift up you can either then do a bite or you can turn off to the right to try and do it by this those are kind of your options there so you're looking for that little lift up by going across up, up the side of the fence. Okay. That little lift up is what gets you there. And then here, you almost want to have like a 45 degree angle if you want to do it um, biteless. This one is implemented in the run. So there we go. There's biteless on that side. Biteless on this side is quite a bit harder, harder though. Um, which is why, even though it's the first one, we don't do biteless on the first side. You want to jump quite early with this one as you're trying to go for biteless. Um, and once again, you're just looking for anything that lifts you over the fence, okay? Once it feels like you're starting to, like, lunge forward over the fence at all, you can go for your bite and you should be good. If you are doing the double bite version, you will save three seconds. If you go for single bite, you will save five seconds. And if you go for no bite, you will save about seven seconds over doing the two, like doing the standard two up skip route. So that is that is what it is. Um, single rang should only really be something that you do once you are doing spire swim. The reason for that is spire swim is much harder than fence skips. Fence skips are about the same difficulty as two up skip. In all honesty. Um, the reason why I mentioned spire swim is spire swim is probably like five times harder then two up skip we can still get it like 80 90 percent consistency um with like a ridiculous amount of practice but it's a much harder thing to get at pace and everything like that um ship breaks is just fundamentally a harder level than two up so by doing this route you're basically front loading all of the difficulty onto ship breaks and you're doing like all of these extra strategies and stuff like that for single rank um and you also get to do spire swim um, and then you're also adding in multiple two-up skip level difficulty skips and stuff as well. So once you add Spire Swim, 
or once you're wanting to add spire swim that's when i would add single ring i wouldn't do it before that and honestly all of these strategies are things that you should only really be considering once you're shooting to go for subverty okay subverty is getting you to currently fourth in the world at the moment who knows where the leaderboard is going to be in the next next year or so but sub 30 is around the point that you should be looking to add in spire swim and single rank to your route um anything before that just keep it with the simpler route um so i think that's everything when it comes to single rank um the other routing options and stuff like that that exist is dropping getting all of the seahorses and then doing something called Bilby Route. So I'll just show you what this looks like. This is something that Brandon and I are working on. I'll just make this very brief here because it has not been fully proven yet. Also, we have another strategy here called Buzz Cheese Swim, which is not too easy. I have a setup for it here, though. Doesn't work 100% though. You're basically looking to like get caught by this rock and then get a dive. It's not an easy one. There we go. Top runners can maybe get that like 30% of the time at the moment. And then you swim across here. This one saves like a few seconds. So you go through, you do all of this section, all of that. But my estimates is that this um, bat swim route will potentially save up to like between five and ten seconds, that kind of thing. However, the consistency of bat swim is very low at the moment because we don't fully understand it right now. There's also another thing on bridge that we don't fully understand, but um, I may as well show it very briefly as well. But these are just like all of the routing options type type stuff. So basically, you shoot. And then you skip your cuts in, and then do I maintain my swim? No, I don't. That's the part where we don't understand why it's consistent or not. But you can sometimes keep your ground swim out of that. And then what you would typically do. It's just a funny meme way to swim up there. But what you would typically do then is you would swim up like this. Damn it. <laughs> the other way that you can swim up is going like that. So you'd swim across here, and then right around this pointy part, boom, you get the bilby, up that crack, and then just there, and then you would go in, and then we do a fast fall here. This is all advanced and theoretical stuff. You don't need to shoot the turkey there. I just did that for fun. <laughs> all right. And then we go into the mushrooms. This is the part that makes the route cool is you get to kind of do things in reverse. Also, you get to see the thunder egg, but not see the thunder egg. Okay. So for this, you then get a nice glide here and then you get a mega fast fall. There we go. And this is going to be the entirety of Bilby route there. That is Bilby route. Um, and then the only other thing that there was to show, really, there is one other thing on sh one or two other funny things on shipwrecks. Um, I won't be able to get this, nor will I be able to get bridge swim probably, but you can actually get a ground swim swimming out of the water there across that rock, and then you can go over to the bilby. That's one other potential little time save, but that's an out of water swim. It's kind of like lawn swim, and they're fiercely inconsistent, so we don't bother with it. Um, bridge on the river tie. This is bridge swim. This is the biggest time save that is available, basically. It's like 13 second time save or something, but essentially just here. You can get a funny swim off of... Well, there you go. That is bridge swim. <laughs> uh, that happens every time I try to show it off. I don't know why. And then you would come down here. 
and, and yeah so that is bridge swim um yeah i think that's pretty much everything that there is in terms of like route options and everything like that um so i will cut there and then if there's anything else to think of i will mention that in the in, in the outro so yeah that is the entire tutorial can't really think of anything else to add so thank you for watching um tied the tasmanian tiger has been an incredible speed game for me over the last year and i would highly recommend that anyone picks it up if you're interested in the game at all speed running isn't a hobby for everyone um there's many people that just enjoy to watch it okay and that's totally fine and you know if you watch this tutorial and you just watch it to be able to appreciate the speed run and everything more i thank you for your time it was it took a bit to put this together um and it took a bit for you to watch it as well um in the description i will have three runs linked they will be a beginner an intermediate and an advanced run um the advanced run will probably be world record or whatever but world record or just some other run showing the advanced routes and everything like that and i can adjust these as times go by as skips and everything get added etc um, at some point this tutorial may be outdated um, so please do check those out whenever you are picking up the game the way that i would recommend that you learn how to run the game okay this tutorial is not for you to run alongside really this tutorial is so that you know everything that there is to know about every skip and every strategy and every line and everything like that basically and like all of the like different little decisions and things that we do so to actually run the game i would recommend that you chuck one of these videos like playing on your phone or something like that or a second monitor if you have that and chuck it on like 50 percent speed and just walk alongside it okay like if you have a video at 50 percent speed a lot of people can get around around one hour for their first run somewhere in that ballpark and especially if you ignore gate skip a lot of people can get like 50 minutes for their first run some people spend 20 to 20 minutes to three hours on their first gate skip um i was just hearing of someone that said that they took two and a half hours to get their gate skip on a run just earlier today even um so yeah if you want make sure that you allow yourself to use the cheat codes and stuff to get past the gate as you're just trying to learn and figure out the run for the first time figure out if this game is for you remember to turn off vsync and just run alongside a a speed run at whatever difficulty you're wanting to do beginner intermediate or advanced well beginner intermediate expert um watch any of those at 50 percent speed and just try and copy what they're doing so yeah with that out of the way once again thank you for watching i've been lawn and yeah if you'd like to see the world record history of this game speed docs recently released a world record history of this video uh sorry of this game um, I worked on it alongside many other people, Brandorn, Kama, Aquarmody, CC, Neverender, Never CJ, all of those guys, they've done incredible work putting together a lot of documentation and everything like that for this game. A lot of effort and everything has gone into it. The game has also made it back into GDQ for 2022. So yeah, things are looking really good for the game and I hope that you guys would all consider joining the community. Um, we're very active on the um Thai speedrun discord which is linked at the top of the Thai speedrun speed uh linked at the top of the Thai one speedrun.com page um make sure that you download practice mod or anything like that and check out karma crimson coral killer myself um sir lawrence nz underscore two on twitch i think or lawn nz on youtube or whatever regardless yeah, that, that's all of the information, I think. Um, this game has been a pleasure to run, and I love it. <laughs> Take care, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.